<laughs> hey, hey, people! Hola! Welcome! Now, can uh, let's do like a quick uh, tech test. Can everybody hear me? And uh, let me know that you can hear me. Gabe, say something. Hello, testing one two one two. Famous Gabe, and uh, can you hear the music? Famous. The irrepressible game. Let's let's go with that. Famous, maybe, maybe not. Irrepressible. For sure, for sure. you are not able to be repressed. For better or for worse. So, Witchy, uh, Witchy, can you hear us and every everything? Music too loud, too low? Tell us, baby. Hey, Witchy, what up? What What's up, dog? Raven Lipster? Okay, everything's good to go. I love when you say that. All right. All right. Uh, well, that's a. This way we can see the chat. But All right, but not be distracted. Not be All distracted. Right. Well. Welcome to the show. Welcome, Gabe. You Thank are. You. You've, you've just got here like airmail. Uh, yeah. I mean, he's just been delivered to the front door. He perfect, just showed up. Perfect time. Thank you for the. Thank you for the directions. That was that was a confusing <laughs> romp through Mill Valley. Was, yeah, we're in. We're in the, the verdant hills of Marin County. So it's easy to get lost up here in the hills. Um. Okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, Witchy. Uh, all right, you guys, you guys are screwing with me. You really can't hear me. Don't, don't be screwing with my tech at the beginning of the show. I'm trying to get this all straight so I don't have to worry about it anymore. You little Billy. Well, I'm very pleased and excited to have Gabe with me. Um, we are going to taste some amazing tequilas tonight. Gabe and I have both tasted these before, of course, but we're going to taste them you know, again. Yeah. And in <laughs> and a again. whole different, you know, I, I'm hoping like in a, in a little more um, structured and... Uh, in an educational way. Um, wow. Yeah. You, you, have, you have high hopes. My I have, a you have very high hopes. I have sky high hopes. I know that uh, you won't let me down. Um, Gabe was with me when we went to Tequila Camp together. Uh, Gabe's actually been down to uh, the state of Lisco nope. twice. Nope. So you are the Comandante, and I am. Uh, What's the Comandante? You are the commander. The commander. And yeah. I am the lowly. The uh, this is your show. I am the Tahona scraper. Tahona scraper. Yeah. Wow. The tequila whisper, if you will. So the first thing I'm going to do before we will chat up a little bit, but I want to I want to get some pores going here so we can get some breathing going. I'm going to get right to it, and we'll talk a little bit about the history of this brand and the brand. We're drinking El Tesoro White Label tonight, as opposed to standard El Tesoro. Also known as olive oil. Right. Because, because, because the bottles kind of look like a, you know, a fancy olive oil bottle, or maybe not fancy. I'm not too up on the olive oil world, but... Uh, it does look like an olive oil bottle. So I think we coined that on the forum, didn't we? I believe we did. I believe we did too. And, we also kind and, of white label. White label. <laughs> hey, where do we get that name from? If, if you're unsure, the key is that the white labels have a white label. <laughs> very, very important. All right, so I'm gonna I, give me that. Damn it! Damn it! I'm gonna open this um, silver, brand new, but oh, uh, what what lot number? Ah, I knew you would ask me. So this is um, lot uh, B, 1027. 1027. So, so that's uh, kind of an older lot. Um, not super old. So for you uh, white label nerds, um, the, 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 you, there's a year to year or batch to batch variation in most artisanal tequilas. And El Tesoro is no exception. So at some point, um, so, so every bottle is going to have a lot number on it with this one actually before you open it. Um, the bottom, there's typically a white sticker. You probably won't be able to read yeah, put that. Yeah, put that really close. You can get pretty close. Yeah, there you go. Try. I don't know if it'll, if it'll focus. But um, anyway, there's a white sticker that has just a batch number on it. And for the silvers, they switched from the white label bottles to the um, olive oil bottles, I think around 1031. So I have a bunch of bottles of 1030. Ah. Um, and I've seen as far back as 1017 on the white label silvers. I'm sure they go back further than that, though. So... Um, that puts a little bit in perspective. Super. Uh, so I, I, this might be the middle of the of yeah. the American white label imports. What year would you say this kind of came up in the San Francisco? Like 98, 99, millennium? Is uh, it, honestly, I have no idea. We really idea. don't know, do we? Yeah. What, what, do we know what year they changed to the olive oil bottle? So they it? changed pretty close to around the time I started getting into tequila. So probably four to five years ago. Okay. So I, rem I remember doing a tasting of the Añejo white label versus new one. I couldn't tell the difference. And if, if you search the forum, um, Ian Chadwick's forum, if you search back far enough, one of my earliest posts is, is saying, oh, I just tried El Tesoro, blah, blah, blah. I compared these two. I can't tell the difference. Now, maybe I didn't know what the hell I was talking about, but I think at the time they were pretty close. They I would just... never say that to your face. Yeah. Um, but you oh! would think it. 
Oh, I've been waiting all week for this. Uh -huh. Oh my god, smell that. Uh, oh yeah. All right. Um, how are we uh, managing glassware? Well, uh, do, do we want to like do different ones in different glasses or just refill? Well, we. I don't know how soon you want to get. Let's try to do them in um, in the, each in the, to their own glass. To their own glass. And we'll we'll wash them out as needed. Okay. So. Uh, pour the. Oh, I know the boys. The boys love to see the pour. So. Uh, Ooh, yeah, that's a good pour. Do a smaller pour for me. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do unfortunately have to drive home to the South Bay. There you go, buddy. That was a tiny pour. All right, now. Let's talk about some things. Now, I remember when we went on a trip, you were one of the, um, one of our, our most um, detailed sniffers, is, is the way I'll put it. The, the, your command of um, descriptors for the nose was, was just outrageous and wonderful. And I'm not putting you on the spot here, but I, you know, I will say uh, up front that Gabe and I, of all things, we happen to live you know, relatively close to each other, but we also seem to share a very similar palate. We like the same kinds of tequilas. Totally. That, that happens all the time, and it's not just like uh, we're influencing each other. He'll go... In fact, he does this all the time. I'll go like, so, uh, what do you think of that Costa? And I'll go, uh, uh, like, he doesn't tell me what he thinks. You yeah, know, he just yeah. tells, you gotta, gotta work for it. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, all right, so, now this stuff, this stuff is very, very uh, clear, right? It's yeah, I've never, there's maybe a little bit of color. Um, I don't think El Pesaro is rested at all, right? Supposedly no. Tapatio, the sister brand, um, is rested for days, 30 days, something like that. It's rusted for, for a little bit and sometimes takes on some color, but I believe El Tesoro goes from the still to the to the bottle You know, I didn't know that. Quickly. You're saying that they put Tapatio in oak barrels? I don't know if it's oak. I think they have the holding tank. They rest it, and I don't know if that's that like that giant yellow wooden thing at the at the distillery well, or I think if it's like a metal tank. Yeah, that's the fermentation No, no, no. Tank, no right? those, are, those are, there's one that's like painted yellow. Remember when, uh, we, when we drank out of the still? So at some point we... Witchy says it's in a vat. Vat? What's a vat? Yeah, is, a vat is a vat wooden or, or metal, Witchy? It's, a, it's like a batty vat. <laughs> anyway, I probably... Don't, don't quote me on any of this. I'm, I'm uh, wood. Witchy says wood. Okay. So, Witchy, you've got, uh, you've got some silver out. And Pedro, what are you drinking here? What are you drinking right now? Do you have a uh, white label? And uh, all you, you three uh, lurkers that are hanging out right now, sign on in and let us know, even if it's a false name, you know? Yeah. We know who you are, though. We'll be able to tell once you start testing. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> waiting to trap, trip us up. Yeah. So listen, uh, <laughs> Billy. All right. So Dr. K, uh, let's get right to it. Um, so what do you, uh, you know, I, I'm so familiar with El Tesoro and, and the nose that um, it's hard for me to actually come up with a descriptor anymore. I mean, when I smell it, it smells like El Tesoro. Right. You know what I mean? It's, right. It's a little tough. I'm doing you all a disservice a little bit, but. Um, it is a hard one to pin down because I mean, there's agave there and it's strong, but it's it's not the it's not the highlight. It's what, not. What is I, it, is it, oh, I'm sorry. What I like about El Tesoro is that it's complex. There's a lot going on, and in my opinion, a great tequila, a great mezcal, is about complexity. That's one of the key things. Now, that's my opinion. Not everyone agrees with that, yeah. but for some brands, they change from being more complex to less complex, and I've lost interest in them. So, I get like a, I get, I always get. What I define as a floral nose on this, and I don't, I don't even know exactly why I say that. It doesn't smell like flowers. It smells kind of vegetal to me, but not like asparagus. There are other brands that have, uh, like Sierra Lakes to me, uh, smells very kind of asparagus-like, broccoli. I don't, I don't find it especially, especially flowery, to be honest. There's a little bit there at the end, but I just take like a big breath and kind of... Really? Yeah, because it's a first I get a little, little bit at the end. To me, uh, so when she said that uh, there's some mineral he's getting on, and I, I think there's... Mineral, I would say. Um, there's, yeah, I feel like that kind Did of... Did you gym the cop? No, no. <laughs> All good. Um, I think there's, yeah, more of a mineral, kind of earthy, earthy tones to it. Well, mineral for sure. I don't get that earthy mushroom musty that I get on some, especially red boats. And that's actually, that's what I liked about that, too. Pink Azul ripple that I was just so yeah. in love with. I'm 
I'm a huge fan of, of mineral earth. Uh, like, you know, dusty dirt. Andros says mineral too. I, I, think, I think this is, dusty is a great word. I think I think this is kind of a, has a little bit of a dusty feel to it. And at one point I was drinking white label Alcazar Añejo and some Naco Green label Añejo back to back with a buddy. Um, and just that, yeah, the brick, kind of brick oven dustiness of the Alcazar really stuck out for both of us. Um, brick oven, yeah. Yeah. Um, the Warno. Yeah, so just, uh, you know, guys who are watching this probably already know, but Alcazar um, claims they crush the agaves with the Tejona. And well, they definitely have cooking them in brick ovens, so it's done in a very traditional way, and I think a lot of that comes through in the taste. Yeah. Although the Tahona is the point of skepticism for some people. Well, it's very clean. <laughs> it's a very clean Tahona. Yes. Even though they've got lots of agaves around and they're roasting them. Yes, they keep their Tahona the very, very clean. Spotless. That, yes. That's the cleanest Tahona I ever seen. Right. All right, I think we got to taste this. Yeah, yeah. Enough of this. It's, it's, it's calling me. Very nice. Now this is that first uh, palate setter, you know, yeah. you know that first hit of a of tequila. So, so let me ask you, Libby, do you, when you palate set, do you always palate set with what you're drinking, or do you ever do you have a standard palate setting tequila? That's a really good question. I usually go with what I'm drinking. I I I've never thought of a palate setter. Okay, because my, my buddy Chris is the guy. This is a, he's a friend of mine uh, in South Bay, and I've gotten in a little bit into tequila lately. Yeah. Um, he's, he comes from more of a Scotch background, so he likes some of the mezcals and stuff as well. Um, but anytime I go over there, um, we go together and play some guitar and hang out. I'll go over there and we're going to drink some tequila. First thing he does is he pours a little Sete Leguas Blanco. He always starts his palate with that. Really? Um, so he kind of puts it's it in a... interesting. Yeah. I, I haven't I've gotten into that routine, but yeah, it's kind of an interesting, interesting idea to kind of establish the baseline and then relative to that, what this tastes like rather than relative to... I can see doing that. I can see doing whatever. that for sure. Because if we had Sete Leguas right now, this would just... Uh, it would, it would be so different. It would, it would, I think some of its uh, natural flavors, like I'm getting a lot of caramel, a lot of that that sweetness. Um, uh, no, no, I'm sorry, for this. So that's caramel. Yeah, like this. yeah. We're drinking now? Yeah, 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 I'm getting a lot of sweet. You, you know what I'm saying? It's insane. It's crazy. No, 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 I get like a lot of sweety, kind of rich, kind of buttery, butter love. Now, it's not buttery like an añejo, but... This, this isn't this, this tequila is an enigma, and it's so beautiful. I get zero butter for the record. So Pedro's asking, uh, that's the aftertaste, right, on the uh, on the butter, yeah. butter and caramel? It is, it is. I'm getting um, you know, a lot of mineral spikes on the taste. Now, are you doing the deep throating technique? That sounds really dirty. So you need to. You can't just say walk in here and say deep throat. No, you, well, you know, I talk about this <laughs> uh, probably every show. That's my uh, favorite tasting okay. technique. I've only seen one or two shows, and you just mentioned mentioned in the passing. Okay, so what you want to do is put some of that um, tequila on the back of your tongue and hold it there as far back as you can go. And then when you're ready to drink it, kind of tip your head back, and that gives you this really wonderful flavor bloom. How much? Small, tiny amount, or, or a decent size amount? A decent size, yeah. Not not tiny, you know. Enough. Yeah, that's about right. And um, and yeah, I hold it on there for like 10, 15 seconds, and I just let it go back. And well, when I breathe in, the full flavor of whatever tequila brand I'm drinking really starts to come starts to come out. Yeah, that does have a nice little hit. Isn't that amazing? It, it really fills it out. Uh, I find that if you, if you take it right back down, you're missing part of the part of the natural bloom. It's a little hot though. So Delta Sor, yeah, it's a little hot. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if every tequila Delta Sor can be a little bit on the hot side. Oh, that, yeah. that one, there was like the explosion of flavor, but also a little bit of like kind of burny tingly. Yeah, uh, burny. Burny. Burny yeah. talk, Bernie's talking to you. Right. Um, I would say though the strongest flavor that came out of that was the mineral. Just really strong mineral on the, on the finish on this. Minerals. Um, I will say, you know, you know, a good palate, uh, a good palate starter for me, might be 1921, because I do know its profile so well, and I find it super minerally, and uh, you know, I've got it's got that wet cement going on that I really like. Mm -hmm. Now, 
I'm not getting any wet cement here, but when you start to talk about minerally, and I talk about some other brands I like, like um, uh, uh, Fina Estampa, which I know we, we did, it's one of the few we disagree on. Uh, I get a lot of minerals in Fina, too. Okay. And I am picking that up, I will say. Uh, you guys, you're, um, you're helping me define what I'm what I'm tasting here. So I'm just reading some of your thoughts. Uh, the aftertaste, you get a bit of sweetness. And okay, so, so yeah. So here's a question. Yeah. Uh, Witchy, did you say you had a lot, uh, a lot sticker or no lot sticker? Sorry, I should be talking Sorry, to the camera, not not talking to the Witchy. Now ah. Witchy lost his lot sticker. Oh, you bitch. But yeah, but Witchy, this is uh, you're pretty sure that's not a Mexican bottling, right? Because just for uh, all of our fans who are watching. The, the way that El Tesoro is currently bottled in Mexico, it has this uh, label and this bottle shape. So it's very confusing. Uh, it's possible you might go on eBay, for instance, and they'll say, hey, El Tesoro white label, and you're, think, uh, you, you're thinking that you're getting this treasure bottle, and you might be getting a Mexican current version of El Tesoro, which it doesn't taste like these. Uh, right. I, I, think, I think you can tell the difference because, because um, the Mexican versions, I believe, will say Blanco, since they're going to use Spanish, and the American versions are going to say Silver. So that's, I'm not 100% sure about about that, but that's a good starting point to look for. Um, and Witchy, anyway. Witchy says he's got a Denton, and I don't. I think this is Fielding Jones. Um, this is the importer we're talking about. <laughs> this is how dirty we're getting. We're getting yes. down to lot numbers and importers <laughs> right, and so bottle, this, bottle imprints. So this is imported. Now here's another giveaway. So you look at the bottom of the, of the back label right there. And it says, imported by Fielding Jones. The original importer of these white label bottles was Robert Denton. And it'll say, imported by Robert Denton uh, Incorporated or something. It'll have Denton's name, but Denton will be like the first however many shipments he did, however many years he did that. Then you go to Fielding Jones, and I think Fielding Jones was the end of white label. Uh, as far as I know. Right. I, yeah, I think, I think the bottle change also corresponded with... Uh, uh, what's the distributor they're on now? Um, it's a big, bigger American, uh, Jack Daniels or something, you know. Something Wilson, like, Daniels? Wilson Daniels. Yeah, uh, moving over to a much larger distributor and also a, fundamentally, I think, a larger volume of product. Um, anyway, though, um, just to get back to the so which is common, a bit of sweetness. Um, do you think do you think this is a sweet tequila, or would you say it's more of a neutral or bitter tequila? Well, I don't think it's bitter at all. Um, there was, you know, it's funny before. I, I sat here with you tonight. I wouldn't exactly have called that El Tesoro is a sweet tequila. I would have called that it, it's what I define as floral. It's got a highland kind of floral, uh, uh, minerally spirit going on. And um, there are other... Oh, uh, 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 I forgot. There's, an, <laughs> there's another brand I want to do a side-by-side -side with this. Uh, we'll have to get to that later. Okay. I didn't prepare that bottle yet. Um, there are other there are other uh, brands uh, like uh, Buscadores, for instance, which I know which, which I know which he is a fan of. Um, Buscadores has a very related flavor to me, and it's that floral thing that is the first hit of El Tesoro. I will say nothing tastes like this to me. Nothing nothing has the El Tesoro uh, balance of flavors that this one gives me. Yeah. I agree. I agree. And some interesting Buscadero stuff. Well, yeah, we'll get, we'll get to that later. Yeah. Um, so, I forgot where I was going with this. Oh, I, I did want to mention the, the newer El Tesoro. So, I, I've had um, my, my buddy Chris, he picked up some newer El Tesoro Platinum. This is the olive oil bottle. Um, lots 1065 and 1067 or 1068. Not so impressed with that. Not so impressed. I thought that was, that was sweet, more pure agave, not as complex. Really? Um, like a little tapatio-like, perhaps? Of course. Mm -hmm. ta ta there's nothing wrong with being tapatio-like. So that, that 1051, sorry, we're going to nerd out just a, a moment more in batch numbers. So El Tesoro <laughs> batch 1051, I think it's amazing. It's awesome in every respect. It's, it's very top. Silver. Silver. Uh, pl platinum. Plat Plat yeah, Plat platinum. Yeah, um, platinum. And I've got a bottle of 1046 open right now, which has a similar vibe. Just mm -hmm. complex, a little bit more... Vegetal. Yes, really, absolutely. Really, really good. Might be Tapatio, might be El Tesoro. Hey, 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 someone would someone, say. Who, yeah, who can, who can say for sure? Someone yell at us for you yeah, know, bringing yeah, that up. Yeah, exactly. Um, but um, <laughs> um, still very good. The 1065, 1068, I'm a little disappointed. Hopefully that's a, a temporary thing. Um, so Now, we've talked, gonna, about, well, we've talked about this a lot, that um, there's a lot of, uh, excuse me, shortcuts 
and cost cutting going on with tequila producers these days. So the whole reason we're doing this uh, white label show and then you know talking about these great treasure bottles is because you can't get them anymore because the juice doesn't taste like this. And it, it's not just El Tesoro. Um, and I'm not speaking for myself and I'm not speaking for you know the company or anything like that, but I will stand by the fact that this juice, does, if I go crack open a bottle of El Tesoro, it's not gonna taste like this. And it's not just because the lots vary the, from the sugars of where the agave is grown. Or, I've heard all kinds. Yeah, of it's, it's a it's a bigger trend. What's there, a, there's obvious if trend. you if you take El Tesoro Silver 1027, 1028, 1030. I've done this. You take them back to back. You can there are very obvious differences in them, but there's a very strong commonality, and there's a much different flavor if you move to like uh, 1046 or 1051 or 1065 it's a much more dramatic it's not a it's not a batch to batch difference it's a something change difference yes and i don't know what that once change it, is once it changes it's like it's always changed yeah once it's starting to go bad it's always bad well bad is not bad is not the when that word came out of my mouth I, I felt the same um, way like, i'm not going to call it bad it, it's not certainly not drinkable good. it's a great gourmet brand it is um but that's for another show when we're going to taste the current El Tesoro. But um, so anyway, it's it's that it's definitely a brand that, ch that changes. I think there have been some evolutions. I don't know if it's a deliberate process change, if it's environmental factors. I personally am skeptical that they still use the Tahona, but I have no evidence of that other than my my nose. Okay, and uh, uh, move yeah. on anyway. to just give us two more glasses. We'll All keep right. talking. Hey, I see that Maria Jose, Maria Jose, Maria Jose has, has joined us. Maria is. Jose is a is a little friend of mine. Ah. And little Maria Jose, I have a little friend here. My little, say hello to my little friend. He's come to say hello and keep you company. Maria Jose has been wanting that little dog ah. since um, 11th grade. What happened to that? Shh! Don't tell her. Um, okay, now. I think we're going to move, um... Move it out and take the standard flight up. Yeah, hey, I just see there are some tech issues. Did, did we just go black for everybody? Uh, actually, more importantly, are we back up for everybody? Everybody see us and everybody's cool? Maria Jose says C. Good. Okay. So, uh, great. I'm sorry that all happened. Sucks. All right. You said some yups. We're back. Right, you so, didn't miss anything important. So here's what I want to do. Now, there's a lot of, um... Of different uh, ages of El Tesoro. Now we're moving on and, and looking at the Reposado. You see that? Oh, and I have something to tell you, people. Uh -huh. I spared no expense. Did you see what yeah, you I saw? saw didn't you? Tell me, tell me what we're looking at here, people. Pedro wants to know the lot number. Yeah. We'll get there. Do you, do you see what I'm? Friend. Yeah. Do you see what I'm showing you? Do you see what eagle eye caught before I even mentioned it? All right, Gabe, since your eyes are so great, what lot are we drinking here? We are drinking, ooh, 1015. 1015. So, uh, no, there's not a fly in this one. Good, good guess, though, uh, Witchy. So this is a Robert Denton, uh, <laughs> excuse me, that we were just talking about. So 1015, uh, in my in my treasure hunting experience, there's a lot of 1015 repos, and it's pretty damn good. Um, although I wouldn't, I wouldn't pass on any white label of the sorrel. I see a lot of 1015s. I've seen a couple 1014s, 1017s. And white, white, uh, Rick Pizzotto, I think, changed over at 1018. 1018, I think, are 1018 all, are all oil bottles. So. Although I thought someone had a 1018 white label. Really? Yeah, okay. I, I seem to remember reading that on the forum that there was a. But I have a 1018 olive oil uh, bottle upstairs, actually. And, um, oh, wait a minute. Oh, what's this? Upstairs. Oh, what label, what, what lot number is that, Gabe? That is a 1018. So we're going to taste this 1018 and do a side-by-side. -side. Oh. But first, we're, we're going to taste for sure. Oh, Witchy's got a 1014. Oh. Excellent. You're a man. Witchy, getting it get, on. Get old school. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Right, so this is... Uh, just I'm actually not getting a lot of that. Yeah, it, it's... Um, it's staying in the bottle. Yeah, I know. We, it's, it's gotta. We gotta let that genie out. Hold on. All right. So we're gonna let this breathe for a second. Okay. We gotta keep these glasses straight. I know what's gonna happen. All right. I'm gonna try to go Blanco Repo all the way up because uh, I have I have I have a little tape. We can tape the bottom. Or is that just too I can, sick? I can. Oh, look at you. I can just, uh, I'm gonna do the same thing. You guys are so patient. All right, Maria Jose, what are you drinking? Yeah. You better be drinking something. Report. Oh, Maria Jose. Roll call. Yeah, maybe we should come back. All right, so we've got this repo. And um, 
I'm so, gonna say. So what, 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 uh, I don't know if they could see that on the camera. We were we had our glass down and we were kind of swirling it. Yeah, I'm trying. I've, to see, I've seen other up. tequila connoisseurs do that, so I, I imitate them, even yeah, though I don't I, really know what it does. Well, I've seen well, <laughs> I've seen Carlos Camarena, the, the That's true. owner yeah, and distiller. That. Yeah, he did that. Uh, he took his, his tequila right out of the barrel in front of us and then mixed it up like a tornado. Now that though was because it was it was hotter than he really wanted it to. Uh, I think he was. Oh, trying was that to, right? I think he was trying to. Well, no, 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 not, not temperature, I think alcohol-wise. I think he was trying to aerate it to reduce a little bit of the hotness that really? the alcohol burns. That's, because oh. the general consensus is that, is that it was a little hot out of the barrel. I thought it was amazing. I, I thoroughly enjoyed the, what he pulled out of the barrel. The, torna yeah, the, tor says, the yeah. tornado. Yeah, remember that witchy? I mean, it was amazing. It was so beautiful. Now, here's something I'm going to tell you guys, because you're not able to taste this. Gabe, tell me if I'm out of my mind. This needs to open up. There's nothing coming on. You know what I mean? Like... Uh, we're gonna taste it, but I'm telling you, when this, this is a brand new bottle, and this is something for you to know uh, as you're tasting and you get into gourmet tequilas, lots of times when you open a new bottle and you drink, what you're tasting in that first sip is not what you're gonna taste even the next day when the bottle's had some air into it. It softens, I've had tequilas do this, um, the nose expands, and it's mostly, I'll say it's mostly in the nose for me. But I've also had, um, I just I did a show a couple weeks ago where I did 1921 Reserva Especial, which is their añejo. Añejo. And um, I poured it. I poured a, a sip. Poured a glass. And the first sip, it was you know kind of good, you know fine. I liked it. But by the end of the show, it had opened up so much that it beat out Gran Scenario uh, Green Label. Wow, I'm telling you, it brought like the banana. It brought okay. you know it brought like big gobs of. Vanilla. It okay. was so good. Nice. Okay. It was nice. hot. Alright, so Pedro says let it breathe. I know, I know. But we gotta we gotta taste it. We, oh, gotta, wait, show, wait. we gotta show it to you. Alright, hold on, hold on. I got an idea. I have a better idea. Let it breathe. Okay. Two more glasses. Okay. You know what we're gonna do? This 1018 has been breathing plenty. We're gonna start with the 1018. Alright. And then we'll go the other way. That'll give this a couple minutes to breathe. Okay. Alright, so again, El Tesoro. Um, you uh you know, if, if you're looking for a, a treasure bottle, a better bottle of El Tesoro olive oil, look for a natural cork. That's just the best way without getting too nerdy. If the cork at the liquor store is a synthetic cork, and you'll know that because it won't have little black rhubarbs all over it. So you, yeah, you know what it like a, It'll be like, like a gray, pl play pra gray plastic cork. Yeah. You'll figure it, it out. If it's got that, it's a newer bottle, and you should buy it if you've never bought it and you've never tasted it. But if you're looking for these kind of uh, bottles, uh, go for the natural cork. So far, that's like the best uh, descriptor to let you know that you're getting something that's uh, a little better than uh, right off the truck yesterday. All right, so stack. So we're going to do this in order here. Yeah. Blanco, 10, 8, 10, 15, 10, 18. So my, my 10, 15 is always going to be bad. Interesting. So, so the, oh, very the, different. The, yeah, the one we just had, uh, so it, it really felt kind of muted, at least compared to the Blanco. The Blanco, you smell it, there's so much going on, just explosion of flavor and interest, you know, party in my glass, everyone's invited. Uh, the Repo was being a little bit more antisocial. Yeah, very constricted. Um, yeah. Um, this one, not as bold, still not as bold as the Blanco, but it's like it's got a lighter touch to it. And it's, I would say this one is more flowery. Some bitch! Agree or disagree? Totally. Now, the, on the nose, oh yeah, look, I mean, I still have a ton of good left here. Oh, it's a little bit citrus, like an orange or something. Now I'm just making up words. No, 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 no. Sometimes you can do that. You just say random words and people are like, yeah, I taste mint. No. Uh-huh. <laughs> you do. <laughs> it's the power of suggestion. Now, this has a great straw color to it. And that's, actually, that's a good point. In my opinion, as I drink more and more tequila, or as time goes on and I... Uh, my experience broadens. The best tequilas have a light touch. Oh. Uh, old El Tesoro, Old Chinaco, these aren't like, oh, okay. these aren't heavy wooded products. These are tequilas with a hint of aging. They're not trying to it's be a, a bourbon. Put it, they're, not, they're not trying to be a bourbon. They're not trying to be a scotch. If you want heavily aged stuff, drink drink aged rum, drink scotch. Nothing wrong with that. Hey, well, I, like want I, I, I will, I will uh, uh, disagree there. I mean, I like, um, excuse me, I like some heavily aged tequilas like, um, uh, 
I, I, I just, yeah, I just ran a, a total blank. No, the um, the uh, uh, San Matias. Uh, Oh, that's Orgullo. Yeah, Orgullo. Yeah. Orgullo. Yeah. And also the Cuervo and Yeho, which is super thick and buttery caramely. Right. You know, I like that too. I find, I'm not, not to put down for anybody that likes those, nothing, nothing wrong with that, but I find as time goes on, I, I like them less. They're, uh, I like that lighter touch. And, mm -hmm. But certainly to. Uh, keep their shirt up. Witchy's right, woman's around. Up. All right. Hi, woman. Word up, dogs. Um, Woo! Metallic taste for uh, 1031. Yeah, interesting. Is that, is that an olive oil bottle, Quinta Soul, and or a, uh, a white label? A repo? No, no, that's going to be a... Blanco? Yeah, I assume a Blanco. Yeah, I don't know, do you get any like, citrusy thing going on? Sorry, you're tasty. Yeah, wow. Well. Citrusy? Not so much. I got that, probably got the, that a little more in the Blanco. I definitely feel the wood lay on. Something came on. But the beauty of what I love about Yachisoro and this white label Repo in particular is it's not it's not cutting off any flavor. It's just it, like it added a layer on top. It just laid down like a like a thin veneer of wood. It just smoothed out, but I'm still getting all of the detail. Often a really good blanco is yeah, it's, it's not about it's not about making it a woody product. It's about balancing it. That's, that's my my opinion. A good a good rainbow is gonna it's gonna balance the tequila. But maybe the blanco is a little too strong. Yeah. A little bit too much agave or whatever. The rainbow is gonna just put it into a nice even drinkable, but not oaky kind of experience. All right, keep the soul does have a total blanco. That's right. Yeah. Wow, this repo is really coming on. It's good, but it's still even the flavor is, is much much muted compared to the silver. The silver was like cold yes, cold and rich, and this is this is a little bit more of like I'm not the center of attention, but I'll, I'll be at your side the whole night, right? That's a comic. That smells like an agave plant. I mean, holy shit. When I put it, you know, yeah. Yeah. oh it's a little, man, like, kind of it's greenish, greenish amazing. I'm, I'm, I'm smelling this, and I haven't really smelled this before. Not so much cooked agave, though. It's more of a raw, almost a raw it's agave, like it, right? It's like, this is, smells like what it smells like. For me, it's cooked because it smells like what it smells like when I walk into the distillery. Really? Oh, man, I'm really getting it here. I, I gotta say, sometimes this silver has been a little too fuerte for me. If I'm watching TV and I'm gonna go for some silver, Usually to start my night, oh man, um, sometimes this white label is too much for me. Tonight, it's like the only thing bringing, bringing me the action. Okay. I'll be honest, this this 1018 is it's like, it's fine, but after coming from that silver, yeah, geez, that's a, yeah, it's a big it's a big step down in in Ah, yeah, I know. It's, I mean, it's going from muy macho to macho. Yeah, I wonder if, if uh, the Añejo is going to bring it up and give us something else, you know? I have high expectations for the Añejo. It's not a subtle Añejo. Well, so they say. You know? All right, is it time to return to the 1015? Yeah, because I think it's opening up, I understand. All right, so we're moving back to the 1015, the white label. True true white label. You're going to hate me. I am getting a little citrus now on this yeah. 1015. I really am. It's not orange, but it's like a lemony something. There's something going on. You guys, uh, yeah. Oh, that's, oh, okay, you guys getting any citrus? Uh, like Witchy, uh, Witchy says yours is vegetal. Uh, help me out here. Are you, Witchy, you've got the whole flight, right? You're drinking Repo now, or are you still on the Blanco? Let me know. Um, I think Witchy might still be on the Blanco 1014. Now, 1014 was in Repo. Really? I don't think I had a 1014. No, Witchy, it. Witchy, you can't say yup. Because we, we're like 20, we're 20 or, minutes. Or Repo or, Ray Poop or something. Repo, yeah. yeah. Okay, I thought, I thought he was Repo. Yeah. Alright, so, uh, thanks, Witch. There's something in here. I can't put my finger on it. There's All something right, you're very on distinctive. The, you're I'm on the 1015 Repo. Alright, so we're back to white label here. Yeah, yeah this is white label, 1015 Repo. Man. I'm not going to be able to nail it down. It's something very distinctive and very delicious. Oh, there is a, there is something deeper. There's a there's a bottom. There's a bottom. Um, you know, um, 
you want your water to wash your powder in it? Uh, I'm gonna let this finish fine. Right. I'm gonna let mine finish a little because this has a really a very lasting finish, this 1015. I think it's even a little more than the uh, than the 1018, but I, it's probably not. But that could just be my brain. I'm gonna try the uh, deep throw on this one. Okay, Every, everybody ready? Do the deep throw, baby. I can open my mouth that far. So Pedro, uh, I forget. Pedro, you're on the repo. Kinto, what do you want to? My, uh, kind of funk mix. Okay. But it's not like super funk. It's just more like rock and roll that's got like funk undertones. Right. You had some blues when we started. Too. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that was, was just uh, straight up blues. That was a driving wheel. That was, uh, uh, not T-Bone Walker. It was, uh, no, no. Just yeah, it'll come to me. Oh, this again. So you got Booker T and the MGs doing his backup here? Alright. Oh, I'm going right, right. to kind of go back and forth between 1015 and 1018. Try to wrap my brain around the enig enigma that is of the solar rifle. I'm going to tell you something. I'm ready to drink this 1015. Good drink it, my friend. I'm ready to drink this drink all it. night. Yeah, this is good stuff. This is good stuff. Um, it's feeling, um, it's, as it's opening, I'm getting a little more of a bloom, a little more of a fuller mouthfeel. Now, I have another tasting. Uh, oh, Pedro just cracked his añejo. Pedro's a little, uh, a dude, little fancy. Dude, uh, yeah, what, what's, slow what, down. what's the rush, what's baby? What's the rush? We what, you got, got all night. You got no one to talk to? Yeah. Now, I, I will say, um, uh, hopefully this is going to happen next week. I want you all to get Skype accounts because uh, I'm going to... Um, Okay. Which he says, you're okay, Pedro. You drink whatever you want. <laughs> drink frosh. I want everybody to get a Skype account because I'm going to have Skype capabilities and the show is going to turn into uh, Larry King Tequila Whisper Live. Whoa, and what you'll be able to do is, blowing. yeah, you'll be able to call in and uh, I'll get you here on the speakerphone and everybody will hear you. It'll be beautiful. So remember, if you don't have a Skype account, go get one. And I'll, my Skype is Tequila Whisper. Obviously. All right, so um, I have I have other good news. I think it's time for a little news here. Right. I got written up today in the examiner.com, which is a national online newspaper. And um, I want you all to go to examiner.com and do a search when you get on their homepage for uh, uh, <laughs> vodka examiner. Uh, they, they break it down to, like, there's a vodka examiner, there's a tequila examiner, there's a birthday cake examiner. You know, there's people who have their own specialties. Are you telling me you, you, you're a vodka examiner? <laughs> I am not. Uh, but the, no secret. the vodka examiner is a fan of this show uh -huh. and has done us all a really big, wonderful write-up. His name is Chris. Drop him an email when you go there. Uh, you'll, you'll read the cute little write-up. I'm sure Witchy is, like, typing this as we speak because that's kind of bad he is. So, Witchy, you can tell us all how great it is. It's wonderful. He's linked up the show. He linked Very up cool. uh, the archives. Very so, cool. shout out and a wonderful uh, salute to you, Chris. Thank you so salute. much. Uh, we appreciate it. Cool. All right, I'm back to the 1018. Okay. I want to hear your, your opinion. Like, oh, well, okay. More, you know, kind of doing the side-by-side -side thing. I've, I've formed mine. You know, we, one of us should have done this blind. You know? Well, all right, which one's better? 1015? Are they, are, they, are they comparable? Are they the same? All right, what I'm going to do is I just took a hit of 1018. I'm going to go right to 1015. You know, this is them. No. no. Almond, Almond Brothers. Classic. I don't know any Almond Brothers. <laughs> All right, well, you, 20 minutes later, you'll know what this is. This is a uh, whipping post. This is uh, this is a uh, classic Almond Brothers live at... Uh, that doesn't mean I know it. You will. You will. Awesome. Tonight. I'm not a little bit of you, Lippy. <laughs> I think if I had, if you, look, these, these, these lots are so close. They're very close. 
I guess if you twisted my arm and it was a blind tasting, my feeling is this um, 1015 is a little, has a little less heat, and I like that. I think that also as this 1015 opens up and ages in the next couple of days and weeks, I think it's going to get even softer, and uh, it's going to get a little more of that floral. I've, li I've liked the Repo as my favorite age of El Tesoro White Label. I have actually traded away Añejo bottles for the Repo. For Repo. Absolutely. Really? I have. Man. Uh, man. A lot of people go for the Añejo. I found the Añejo sometimes. I I've got a couple bottles, uh, so I'm okay. Don't feel bad for me. You don't feel yeah. bad for me, dude. I don't feel bad for you. Not one bit. Uh, uh, but if I have to make my choice, that Añejo has, uh, I'm not going to say. Actually, I'm not going to say yet. I'm not going to say till till we drink it. But it, I, I will say that I find the Añejo to be a little bit more moody. Some nights it connects, like home run. Other nights, like, eh, not really doing it for me. The, the Blanco and the Repo I find to be more consistently, I open it up, I'm always going to enjoy it. I, I, I hear you, absolutely. Uh, it is touchy. It's touchier than this wrinkle has ever been, which is now quoting uh, from the uh, from the examiner Lippy, article. Lippy mocks you. Yeah, it says Lippy is not typical nor always completely intelligible, which is a load of shit. Yeah. Come on, you know. I, mean, I understand him. It's English. <laughs> hey, so before we before we leave the wrinkle here, yeah. so um, I want you to pour a little bit more of the 1018. Yes. I'm feeling some stronger alcohol in the, in the flavor and the aftertaste. So am I. Absolutely. The, the, Absolutely. The, the 1015 is just smooth, beautiful balance, yes. and that the 1018 is kind of like... It's got smell this, that nose. You can smell the alcohol in the nose now. Yeah. It's, and it's not it's not offensive, but it's uh, it's just a tad. It's, it's there, and it's, uh, no, I, it's, I not, it's less good. than perfect. Oh. The balance is maybe, yeah, is it that balance, much off? The balance is off. I mean, we're talking, El Tesoro, we're talking a balancing act that is so Yeah, I mean, let's so be clear. Steady, we're, we're, right? we're, we're, um, we're nitpicking on minutia here. But very, that's, that's why I brought thing. you, Gabe. Gabe. I mean, if we compared this to any other, or almost any other tequila, it would blow it out of the water. Even 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 the non-perfect tequila. But, but uh, when, you, when, you put, when you put them side by side, you, you notice things, right? Yes. I'm noticing toothpaste. Now, you're going to call me crazy. What kind of toothpaste? Is it's it whitening a, toothpaste? It's like or a, just a, like standard? All right. I, I'm, you bear with me two seconds. Okay. My wife and my daughter, my family was traveling in Portland, Oregon. So my wife, you know, is the one who kind of packs up the toiletries and stuff. So she brought this toothpaste. It's Colgate. Um, I'll find out what it is. It's got like three, you know, descriptors on it. It's like Colgate, whitening, fluoride, blah, blah, blah. Oh, fluoride, that's important. I swear, when I taste this this um, uh, toothpaste, God, I'm sorry, I'm thinking a lot of things. Like I'm thinking, why do I have my keyboard out? Um, when I taste this uh, toothpaste, I swear it tastes like agave. There's this initial hit when I put it in my mouth, and it is actually a really old little travel tooth. I mean, old. You know, it's probably four or five years old. So I'm wondering, if, like, if the toothpaste has aged. And I'm not saying that there's agave in the toothpaste, but there is a flavor. I'm not kidding. It's not like I squeeze this toothpaste out and go like, oh, I can't wait to get my agave hit. I always forget about it. It's in the morning. I'm half asleep, right? And I go, oh, fuck. That's agave. So now I just smelled. There's like a strange minty toothpaste clean, um, almost floor cleanser smell going on here. That's, that's not a compliment. It's not bad. It's not like the paint thinner. Oh, it's well, not like paint thinner. No, it's, 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 like, it's <laughs> almost like um, that poppy. Uh-oh. Hey, what are you hitting, Gabe? Oh, how, how do we look? Uh, we still look. Camera? Oh, look, look, look. Here we go. Hey, we're looking at ourselves like whoa, two whoa. buffoons. All right. Um. <laughs> so there's something in here. Let me this. So while he's doing that, um, Keith the Soul asks, what, how does... Uh, El Tesoro White Label Silver compared to Fortaleza, Fortaleza Silver, and uh, which his response is different beasts, and I totally agree. They're in the world of tequila blancos, they're orthogonal, as a nerd might say. Um, What's very, that mean? That means uh, I don't know what that means they. Um, it's a multi. It's kind of a multi-dimensional um, perpendicular. So they don't. Oh. They don't they're, it's not they're, only they're they're different, perpendicular. They're, they're perpendicular on like 360 planes. What, however many dimensions you got. One, two, eighteen, whatever. I'll take anyway, three dimensions. They're 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 operating in different dimensions. And I would say they're both excellent blancos, but both doing very different things. 
they're both very good for their own reasons. So, hey, look, you guys—I don't even know if it's fair to compare them. They're they're yeah. both great, but they're both very different. Yeah, and that's a whole other show. My opinion. My opinion. Um, yeah, Fortaleza has a, an incredible Parmesan cheese thing going on that uh, is just outrageous to me. It's like drinking a vat of Parmesan. That is the most unappealing. Oh, I mean, oh I, that's my fantasy. Like, I can't think of anything better. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> you lead a simple life, Libby. Yeah, Ermo, I just want to... Parmesan I want to lay down in a Parmesan field and be fed with a vat of liquid cheese. What, what about saying to two bikini-clad women wrestling in Parmesan cheese? Does that turn you on? Or is, is my wife watching this show? Or does that does that feel like a waste of Parmesan cheese? Oh, it feels like a waste of material. Okay. you got to get that bikini off. <laughs> well, you got to dip it in the Parma. <laughs> Well, yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> chew it. You gotta get a little texture. Now, here's something that's really interesting. I got a little happy, and I forgot which was which, so I went to sniff them. Okay. And it's like no question. Um, and again, we're talking minutia, but I can smell the kind of minty, toothpastey thing in 1018. So now, yeah, now that this 10, now that this 1015 has opened up, even yeah. the nose is just. Yeah. The, the 1018, my, my right hand here. It's got um, more agave it's, in it. It's, it's got, got more agave. It's, it's more direct and, and a little bit of alcohol. The 1015 no, is The 1015, it's, it's got just, this agave in it. I mean, it, it, I'm open in the bottle. It's it's so it's macho, but in a very restrained way. It says I'm not gonna I'm not gonna attack you. I'm there. I'm everything you need me to be, but I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna be a douchebag about it. Oh, no. thank God, he's not gonna be a douche. Yeah. A douche. For a douche nozzle. <laughs> One of my favorite new words. But we'll keep this. We'll keep the show from going into douche nozzle. Yeah. Then. <laughs> Why not? For now. A few more drinks. Who knows? Mm. Dwayne Allman. All right, so. You're your assignment for I the do, next show. I do like Dwayne Allman, so I, I, I know him nice. through uh, Clapton's album, Layla and oh, uh, Unplugged Love Songs, which is uh, one of my, by far my favorite Clapton album. Oh, yeah. Well, really? Song. You like Layla? Yeah. Interesting. I've just, it's got so much fashion behind it. All the all the romance and, and the everything behind it, it just it came through into a it really it's great, a, it's a great album. group of people. There's something about the production in particular, and I'm not being, you know, I'm nerdy about tequila. Well, I am kind of nerdy about music, too, but... There's something in that Tom Dowd production and the mix of that Layla album that um, it all sounds like it's hopping underwater and underneath some bed sheets to me. There's, it's like interesting. The pr and Tom Dowd recorded and produced this live this at the too? Fillmore East. Yeah, I mean he's he's fantastic. Uh, but where is the Fillmore East? Uh, New York. New York okay. City. Yeah, Lower East Side. Okay. All right. So um, Gabe. So it's time to get our onion home on and catch up with Keep Us All. Okay. Who's ahead? These guys have just been drinking and watching yeah. us. You fucking luscious. What's now, wrong with you people? Now listen, I have a little surprise for Gabe. And uh, I don't know if this is the time to do it. I feel like it might be the time to do it. I have something for Gabe. I have something, and I wonder if we get too far into the wood that maybe we should... We should think about this. We should try it at both points. Maybe we should smell it once now. now. Let's smell it. Later. Uh, oh, so, so in case, no, it's not a million yeho. In case, uh, I guess it's probably hard to read. This is the, we call this the OG white label. OG stands for... Original Gangsta? Of course. As the, as the tequila arrows Wait, let me put say. this cap back uh, on because I can't stand it. So I, this, is, this is an old artisanal bottle. Do you have the regular silver? So this is, we, we call Take this... Take over, o Gabe. I'm in it's, Sometimes it's called an artisanal bottle. I like OGWL, because it sounds, makes me sound like I have street cred or something. Um, but the they're both white label Altasoro. The one on your left is going to be the older version. And this is easily the best Blanco I've ever had. Um, in Ballard, your life. In my life. Ballard was kind enough to not only trade me a bottle, which I still haven't opened, but he was kind enough to open his bottle at some point and give me a sip from it, which blew my fucking mind, is the yeah. most understated way I could say it. It's it's amazing. Um, anyway, so show them the back label, because you so can the, see the difference between sure. the two. So, do this without crushing them. I got this on the Lobster so, Bus two again, years ago. White lab, uh, OG white label, the older one, is here on the left. Uh -huh. And the current, the less old OG white label is so on the right. The old, the, uh, the basic old label, white label, has uh, this color around band around the back label. The uh, OG label has nothing on it. It says artisanal tequila up here on the neck band. So it says there's a little bubble with artisanal. And then also, it, it might be hard to pick up with the camera, but there's also that the agave is actually a little silver agave on the label. Anyway, um, 
never ever turn down this if you ever get the chance. Um, and if it, well, well, actually, um, I have everybody who's watching the show under oath that whenever they see one, they're going to send it to the show so that we can taste it live. Yeah, just to make sure uh, quality control. We, quality wouldn't, we control. wouldn't want you to be disappointed with with all the hype. We'll taste it, make sure it's good, send you back whatever's left. I think it's time to taste this to reset our palates. Um, Fair enough. You can um, yeah, take, you take mind a glass. I, uh, I'm just you mind if I to... use a fresh read all? Um, what I really love about all of the white level Ultra Soros, but especially this one, the one time I tasted it, um, you can you drink it, you finish it, and the glass for the next hour is just full of all the aroma goodness of the original tequila. No other tequila does that. It's so macho that even when it's gone, it's just like the glass reeks hey, of which, deliciousness. Which you have a plata. So Ooh. I've got a Blanco. Now tell me about what a, what is a plata, Witchy? Because I got this in Mexico. So I thought a Mexican OG was blan was uh, Blanco. So what does plata mean? Plata might be the American OG white label. Uh, Pedro says he got an OG in Rosarito Beach. Fantastic, man! So is it a Blanco or a Plata? I think you're right. I think Plata is the American OG. I think that's what I have, but I, I don't know. Now, I will also say this is... A plata was the first import. So, okay, so it's the American. American Sorry. Yeah. I'm, we're, we're being American-centric. Okay, so this is still 40%, even though I bought it in Mexico. Ah. And it is an old-school bottle. Um, I got it. Thank you. Props to my sensei. You know, my my tequila hunter, my elder, Juan Mesa. It's thanks to Juan Mesa that I got this bottle. Um, when we went to the lobster bus uh, and went down to the lobster restaurant, this huge truck pulled up of all of these old bottles. And, you know, of course, like Tequila Joe, and everybody's running into the truck and doing -do -do this stuff. And I grabbed this, and Rachel was there. And the guy was asking quite a bit of money, not insane money, but a lot. And I, I said to Rachel, you know, like, should I buy this? Because like, I'd never tasted it before. And she goes, you don't buy it, I'm going to buy it. I said, I'll buy it. Yeah. And, um, Good man. Good right. man. Enough. Enough. Here we go. So, But you got to smell it out of there. I know. A little muted. I don't know. I, I got, it's got to go in the glass. <laughs> oh, man. You're a much better bottle sniffer than I am. I, I don't really do the bottle sniff thing there's that something, often. There's something I, that... I've, you know, this Blanco seems to me to encompass every Blanco, Repo, and Añejo that ever existed. It all exists in this Blanco. It's got sweetness. It's got it's got complexity. Oh, Gabe. So on that note, tasting glasses for you oob nerds here. So we're drinking out of Riedel 408s, which is the Riedel specifically designed for tequila tasting. Um, I'm definitely noticing, again, as I become more, more of a snob, <laughs> drinking tequila, um, the glass, the glass does matter, and you don't have to pick this particular glass, but drink it out of, uh, I went to a oh bar in, in Sacramento and was ordering these good shots, but they're serving them to me in just regular, you know, whiskey shot glasses that you're, you're kind of meant to slam, and it ain't the same. You got, you got to have that nose there, oh otherwise, my God. I'm, otherwise I'm getting, you're missing it. I'm getting it. like bubblegum, banana, holy fucking shit. Holy fucking shit is right. right? There's so much there. I could, I could spend all night smelling this. You just called it. You said it. Yeah, oh so God. so this is an order of magnitude more complex. Another nerdy word for it. An oh. order of magnitude more complex than the, the white oh. label soda we, we started with. I, I could I could like take my clothes off and swim in a vat of this for a, like a week, and you, I, I would let it infest and and engulf and, and inflame me and my pores. Oh, there's so much there. So um, I, don't I, don't, I don't know if this is completely true. I think the these OG white label bottles are the are the handiwork of of uh, Carlos's father, Don Felipe. Um, I've heard that. I've heard that. And then the the, the white label and newer uh, incantations of El Tesoro are, are Carlos is doing. And Carlos is definitely an experimenter. He's not a this is the recipe I stick to it. He's moving, shaking, and. Um, Carlos, sometimes, sometimes that's good. Sometimes, and he's outrageous. Sometimes that you know there are some some bumps on the road. He's but, outrageously talented. Uh, uh, yeah. Nothing against uh, yeah. the son, but if this is from the father, which we all I have believed that that is true too. Praise to the padre. Oh man, that's. There is no tequila on the planet like this. No. There will never be again. I I, I fear. Because now there's a lot of me too, me too, me too tequilas. Oh, so good. 
It's okay. My, 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 my operative sex works. Or, or a bottle of this? I know the answer to that. It depends on the sex. Oh, yes! How about sex I, I, with I, this bottle? I was about to say swing. Woo! Swing! No. <laughs> Yeah! Alright, now Dwayne, Dwayne Olin would like that. So I found out Chrissy Hines is totally into tequila. Uh, Chrissy Hines for the Pretenders? Uh, oh, you're not into the Pretenders? Uh, oh, we'll put some of that stuff on. Get you some old there's, school, there's, new school. There's some holes in my, uh, in my musical knowledge. Uh, so Witchy says a 30 year Sierra Legs uh, Blanco. Which, uh. Not all of us have taken yeah. 30 year old Sierra Legs uh, Blanco. I would certainly Thank love you very to. much. But so, Witchy, you've gotten this this bottle, but uh, you're telling us you have not cracked it, right? Are you waiting for like your daughter's wedding? Because those guys are waiting on a lot of stuff. I will say, so so Witchy brought up the um, last when the, the last time the tequila camp went down to see the Leguas, the members of the distiller were kind enough to open up oh. a 30 year old blanco of Siete Leguas, which is a just a really solid, consistent, great brand. Um, and my feeling on Santa Leguas is where, where Carlos is like, I'm changing things, I'm experimenting, I'm moving, I'm shaking. I feel like Santa Leg Leguas is, uh, is a rock. They're not doing anything wild and crazy. They've got the they're formula. Great. And, they're, and, I, and I they're, love they're, they're like, we're they're, good. They're, they're predictable. They're it. fantastic. It's yeah, great. I consistently it. good. Um, I tasted this, though. I got to tell you. Yeah? All right. Sorry. I didn't mean to no, it's all right. interrupt no, your no, orgasm. I, I wanted to do it with you, but I couldn't wait anymore. I had to go. Oh, my God. Now, we're going to send everybody... In the on the planet on a treasure hunt for this now. That's a good thing. No. Because you're not going to like it. It's going to be horrible, and you're going to yeah. want me to know if it's good, so you're going to send it to me. Kind of like a cl cash for clunkers program. Yeah. Send, it, send it, us your old, I'll old, you, dusty, I will make, white I'll, label I, bottles, I, I will make and we'll this, send you new, shiny, old yeah, bottles. I, I, will, I will make that deal right now. <laughs> uh, if you have a version, uh, excuse me, if you have a bottle of um, OG white label Blanco, and you want to send that to me, uh, you can name your trade bottle. Zzz, multiples. Uh, I have everything that's ever been uh, produced uh, in the world, and I'll find it for you. So, uh, whatever. All right, so uh, you taste it. Yeah, it's amazing. What can I, what can I say? See, Gabe, I, Gabe brings me down to earth. I'm over here, like, blowing my load and my shorts, and he's like, it's amazing. A what, subtle what, swing is all I, I need to say. Swing. What can I tell you, man? No, I think the nose is the highlight so far. It is. It the, is. The, nose does the nose is almost better than the taste. Yeah. But, to, but having said almost. that, that's true of almost every tequila. So I think I think a lot of tequilas can put on a good oh, nose man. You and, know, and kind of fake you out. You know and what I taste love. It like, And then the taste is typically less. And then the finish, a good tequila is one that delivers what it promises. And a the, lot of tequilas promise a good nose. Not a lot of them deliver. Now, have you had Fortaleza um, Repo Lot 5? I had a taste. You I had a think, taste. Um, you know, how can I say? I'm, I'm not a I'm not a aged Fortaleza guy. I respect I respect Fortaleza. Fortaleza. I want to like it, but just like Fina, I want to like Fina. I love everything about yeah, it. Yeah. I love the vibe. I love the people behind it. But because so Fortaleza, Fortaleza, fair enough. Fortaleza Blanca. That's where Gabe and I uh, split a little bit. Now I've had other uh, ages of Fortaleza. Uh, you know, other other repos, other añejos. And I totally agree with you. I felt like the Blanco was a stellar product. I will say that the, this Fortaleza Blanc, uh, Fortaleza Repo Lot 5, which I seem to end every fucking show with because it's just outstandingly amazing. The nose on that, the reason I bring it up is not to, you know, bring it up again, but the nose on it is almost better than the taste. I just, I could smell it for hours. I, and I did at a tasting. I had to drive home. Yeah. And I just had a, um, an empty glass for like four 45 minutes, an hour, and I just smelled it, and it was all there. Caramel. <laughs> Keep this all. Shut give, up, give dude! Me your shit. Look, we didn't, we're not finished up the show with that yet. Yet. So, th so this is a this is a fantastic tequila, as, as expected. Um, the nose is mind-blowingly awesome. It's I don't think the taste oh, would finish quite live up to the nose, but it still blows any other Blanc out of the water. It's a very soft ending. It's very. still rich and macho, but it's it's not it's not hot in any respect. It's just soft and kind of like here I am. So was Carlos's father Don Felipe? I think it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. El Tesoro um, de Don Felipe, the treasure yeah. of Don Felipe. I actually don't know his first name. I just know him as Don Felipe. Uh, um, I think his name is Felipe Felipe uh, Camarillo. Yeah. Yes. Why did? Brain not working. Um. 
Well, now, the wonderful thing is that Carlos uh, Camarena uh, is down in tequila making this excellent he's juice. A, he's in Arandas. He's not in tequila. Excuse me. Uh, you know, it's a, this is the Highlands, baby. The Highlands. <laughs> All right. Well, I was, I was, I was, I was, uh, I was, uh, I was, I was, I was diluting it for for, the, for our audience. But fair enough. He's in the Highlands. He is in Arandas, and um, I just wanted to send a shout out to Carlos uh, and to your family. Thank you for making this. Yes. Really, from Plus. from the bottom of my heart. And thank you for having, for hosting me and Gabe at yeah. your wonderful. Twice. I, I must say one word, very quick word, about um, La Altena, the distillery, the fabrica in Arandas, the distillery. I grew up in a farm town in Pennsylvania, and that distillery is outrageously beautiful because it looks like a tobacco farm. What, what I know where uh, tobacco farmers grow the plant and they dry it in these huge tobacco barns and they let all of the juice, they, they dry it upside down and the juice drips down. Uh, La Altena, uh, you can tell it was built before electricity because there are all of these slots above this beautiful brick uh, distillery and it lets all this natural light in. It's just a gorgeous, gorgeous spot. And um, my, 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 my endless thanks for your generosity, yeah. seriously, it, you were you were a consummate host, and um, you answered all of our nerd questions. Right. You you gave us wonderful tastes of the greatest uh, juice, and not with ridiculous answers, but with really in-depth answers. Carlos is really really knowledgeable about every aspect of tequila, and I really respect that. And it didn't totally hit home until the second time I went there. I'm just like, wow, you just pointed out these details about how they pluck or don't pluck these parts of the agave, and he just knows it. Everything about it, it's it's fascinating and very amazing, and it, it comes through because the product is so amazing, even to this day. True, true. All right, so I have a little bit of my original gangsta in a glass. I'm gonna go back now. Don't don't call me crazy. I need to go somewhere for a second. Okay. So I want to go over to the. Um... Do you want to physically move or just? Oh no, no. Show move. Show move. Okay. Um, <laughs> Where are we going, my friend? Although I did, there was something I wanted to get. I'll get that later. Okay, so what I do want to do is I wanted to taste. This is this happens to be the 1018. I just want to come. Oh, see, I'm tasting that. I think I'm done with the 1018. Yeah, because I'm. It's, it's over. I gotta tell you. Yeah, once you go, to, once you go to yeah. OG. Yeah. How do you go from OG to 1018? It's like. Oh man, I had to tell myself that it was time to go. It's time to go. Now, here's a problem: is that 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 OG is so fucking fantastic. What's it going to do to the Inigo? Maybe we need to really um, wash our palates out. Water? Yes. Okay. No, yeah. Well, <laughs> I think the I think the Inigo will hold up well because it's it's a very different beast. The Inigo does. The El Tesoro, you know, especially, it's, it's not just wood. It does have a lot uh, heavier wood than than some tequilas, but um, um, but it's still, it's just got like some butteriness and other just really interesting complexities going on that just aren't found in the long run. So I, I think it'll hold up really well, um, even though it's maybe not overall quality. It's not quite as much of a mind blow as, as OG white label. You know, what is? Now. Exactly, yeah. All right, so. All right, so we're going to open this in Yeho. Um, I think you're right. I think I think it's time. We got to go. We got to go. We got to feel it. All right, so now let me open the bottle. I'm not feeling those glasses. I think they're going to screw me over. You think so? Yeah, I'm going to empty my 1018 and do a rinse here and All right, stick well, with more of, a, more of a champagne flute. I'll take one of those too. And I will do your last champagne flute. I got to say, these aren't Riedels, but um, the opening on the top is a Exact same as a Rito. So it's similar. So this is a this is a Rito. This is a your it's know, one, one dollar uh, <laughs> Albertson class or whatever. Shut up! I, I went in on that. I bought like I'm like oh one dollar. These aren't bad. You know, already they're kind of a little, little sturdy. Oh, I gotta tell you, this cork is really wet. Now, and that's not a bad thing. I don't think it's cork. It's wet because it's been hearing about all the OG OG white label. I'm like you're turning me off, baby. Come on, you got that. Oh, I smell a cork. <laughs> oh shit! I'm, I, there's some cinnamon going on there. All right, the first person who guesses the price tag on this bottle 
gift thing, complimentary something. I don't know. Do you have any consolation prizes? Yeah, Gabe's going to give you a taste of whatever you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll air mail it yeah, to you. Yeah, Gabe's going to give you a bottle of whatever you need. All right. Oh shit. Okay, we got some good stuff going on. Right, did so I actually smell it or did I just look at the price tag? Hold on. Oh. All right, so. Uh, $47.99, $30.99. Oh, you guys. Now I got this. I don't even know where I got this. Uh, That's not kind of buttery, but it's still. Zen Runner! Zen Runner showed up! Oh, who's Zen Runner? Oh, uh, no, you don't know him, but he's a he's a, he's a fan of tequila. All right. He's Welcome a fan of this show. And um, I hope everything's going good out there, Zen Runner. All right, hold on. So we're up to the end. Right. What did you put in? Here, is this water? I rescind my previous my previous offer. You are right on, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> and that's uh, Pedro guess forty nine ninety nine. That's about the going price for a. Uh, uh, yeah, we, we never change your prices. You know, honestly, in my opinion, pay whatever whatever the price tag. You know, bargain if you can, but don't leave the store with with the bottle still there. Um, but typically, the silver is around forty bucks. Repo is forty five ish, and the Yeho is fifty ish. Um, is your typical price points for a... Well, I know you guys like to see... Too. For a uh, white lips. You like to see the poor. Uh-huh. Ow! Oh, yeah! Now, wh- what did you say? Will we say what again, buddy boy? Um, what are we talking about? The, the prices? Isn't that what Gabe was just talking about? <laughs> Look, you know, if you find this... Let me let me just say this because I know that there are no liquor stores listening to this show. I have paid thirty dollars on the low end, and I have paid seventy dollars on the high end for a bottle. Of this. Seventy bucks for what? I found one white label in Yeho. Wow. And it was like way up in Moran. It was like some kooky little liquor store, and they didn't know anything. And they were, and it was a, a woman who was not willing to bargain because she was like. You know, she was just the day help. Yeah. And I just said, forget it. I'll take it. Like, I couldn't leave it. Right. I couldn't leave it. And, and it, at some point, it's worth 70 bucks. Yeah. Because well, you're never going to find at it. every point, yeah. And I, I've known people that, like, oh, who didn't know better that they left white labels and they go back later and they're not there. You see it? Buy it. End of story. This, this is treasure. This is part of the... Elta Sora white label is one of my... One of the three members of my holy trinity of tequila treasure. And the other two are... Uh, I'm sorry, I was, I was just, uh, excuse me, I was watching, Witchy says check your email, which, um, I'm sorry, I can't get my email going right now, so if it's if it's something you can say, say it, um, if not, because if I have the email, uh, it, it's a whole tech thing, trust me, thank you for trying to send me something, I, I think Witchy's saying, like, I'm, I want you to have a bottle, isn't that what you want to say, Witchy, I saw, fit, I saw 15 and 10, you fool, I thought you were cool, Witchy, don't <laughs> tell me stuff like that. And, or tell me where it is, because we'll go take a road trip. Yeah, yeah, road out. trip right now. Okay. First one so, to the prize. Uh, Zen Runner, thank you for showing up. Uh, what are you drinking, Zen Runner? Tell us, tell us what you're drinking. Well, we're, we're drinking this. Uh, now I know you came on the lake. We're drinking Altasora Añejo. That is, uh, it just defines. Zen Runner is drinking air. My friend, you need to upgrade. Witchy, from air to tequila. Yeah, and Witchy, <laughs> how do you know it's gone, Witchy? I think you just don't want us to think it's still there. Yeah. Because you know we're going to drive and go get it. Texas is a small state. We can totally, yeah, we we can can totally hunt that out. You, no, no white label Altasoro can hide from me. I'm a professional hunter. All right, what do you think of this? I think it's great. You, you like it? I think it stands up well next to the Blanco. Sucks. I think the nose is a little subdued. I don't think the nose is anything really? compared to what we were just drinking. I'm getting a lot of alcohol in this nose. I'm getting a little buttery, kind of woody. Well, I'm definitely but, getting the wood. All right, hold on. But so here's the OG, which has like this vegetal kind of asparagus bitterness going on. Now, when I say bitterness, I mean bitter is not the best descriptor. But there's something there. There's there's a there's a an edge that goes off. It's almost like a like a turnip. It's that kind of when I say bitter, it's like a turnip vegetal. Um, not even jicama. Jicama is very sweet, watery. All right, so this is El Tesoro. I will say, this is the Añejo that I've always known. And I think I think something's going to happen. Uh, have you drank it yet? No. I've had like five sips already. Just went right to it. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm way ahead of you. But I'll, I'll let you catch up. No worries. It's just your show. Take your time, my friend. Take your time. Pedro says, uh, send me my address. 
that's where he gets the prize. He thinks I actually am going to make good on my promise. Okay, so Witchy's <laughs> getting try, some... Good try, Pedro. Good try. And Witchy's getting some creme brulee. I will say, Witchy, I'm with you. I'm with you on that. I'm not getting a ton of vanilla. And like, uh, there, are, there are some other manipulated uh, Añejos and manipulated tequilas. That, and now I see our show's going a little long here. I was trying to keep it down to around an hour. Stick with us. We're going to keep going here. We're going to power through. Yeah, this is going to be a marathon. we got a couple more to get I to. came here to drink. Yeah. <laughs> and we, but, but stick with us because we have a lot of really cool stuff to get to. Oh. You know who this is? No. This is Sly and the Family Stone. Uh, I'm not too, I'm not too well versed in the, in the funk realm. All right, so this is total. Like... This is heavy, pure funk. Okay. Early '70s. Sly Stone is from uh, East Bay. Okay. So oh, really? Sylvester, Sylvester okay. Stone. Okay. All right, so he, this. This riff has been this riff has been sampled so many fucking times. Okay. He created this is Sly Stone. Okay. I know you all know. It. Alright, here we go. I haven't tasted this. Alright, which is in it for the long haul? You're the man. Can you guys hear the music, by the way? Or is, is it good, good, good volume levels on music versus talking? Oh, man. Alright, so this is perfect. El Tesoro. Like, Levels are great. All right. Thanks, oh, Zen Runner. Runner. He's always my, he's my tech guru. Excellent. Thank you. Well, you, you know, got to be doing something if we're just drinking air. Yeah. <laughs> so, I got to say, this Añejo is totally kicking that Repo's fucking ass. And I don't know if it's because I've taken such a long time to get here, but it's not like I'm, I'm tasting new things that I never tasted before. This is El Tesoro Añejo. This is it. And yeah. um, it is. It's not a surprise. But I've I've normally liked the Repo, and now uh, I'm telling you tonight, what do I want to drink now for the next hour? I want to drink this fucking Añejo. Uh, I want to drink this Añejo, and then I want to chase it with that OG. OG. Now that bottle, this OG bottle is the only bottle I own. That's it. That, that's that, I got I got to say that's that's how Lippy got me up here, and I it's I still think he's getting totally ripped off. I drove like two hours to get up here and hang out I with Lippy. I do anything to get Gabe here. I'm uh, not doing this show without Gabe. Yeah. Um, but that, that's that's no small sacrifice to uh, give up a little OG white label. I don't know if I have it in me. My bottle might just be me, you know. Yeah. Who else could I drink with? Who else would appreciate it? I can't give that to, like, Jackie down the street. Yeah. Even even if she's going to get drunk and take her pants off. Yeah. Well, well, no, 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 look, if she's going to get drunk and take her pants off, she'll do it on me. The ETWA. Alright. ETWLA. Yeah, that's, that's, that's your, uh. What's the word I'm looking for? What's that, what's that called? Their version of fake rape drug? Um. Uh, tequila. Tequila. Alright, so Pizza Soul says, uh, I find ETWLA, Alpha Soul, White Label, and uh, similar to ET70, uh, which is the 70th anniversary. That's the only tequila. one we don't have represented tonight. And I wish that I did. I do not have a 70th. Um. I'm sure it's killer juice. I'm, I'm sure. I, I tasted it actually, but not, it would be wonderful to do it in a vertical. But you know what? So, so I haven't had the seventies in a little while, but if I'm just going by my memory, I kind of agree with you. This is there's some similar, just really well aged, and and the seventieth anniversary it has its critics. I know a lot of people that are kind of like it's okay, but I'm too hot, I'm disappointed. I think seventieth anniversary is great, and it passes the test. You pour it, you drink it, you've got an empty glass, you can sniff it for half an hour. Good shit. I totally approve of 70. Really? Yeah. I, mean, I think it's great. A good, but yeah. it's also pricey. It's you know, 100, 125, 135 bucks a bottle. So that's why there's not a bottle on my shelf right I now. I did a side by side with uh, thanks to Jim. Jim, another great tequila aficionado. It was the day you yes, were there. Of I was there. I, I do was remember there. this part. Tequila Joe Jim, always Jim is makes very fun generous. of me because I don't remember that day. <laughs> Jim bought us shots of it was. El Tesoro, uh, it was a Paradiso 70th and Tap XA. Do you remember that day? I do remember that day. Do you have a preference for those three? Tap XA blew all out of order. Tap XA changed my life and I'll never see it again. We'll never see it. No. It's cool. No. So, tap, so we were talking about how Carlos likes to experiment with tequila and Tap XA. Tap is top, short for Tapatio, the sister brand that's only available in Mexico. And Carlos did some, you know, some experiment with some number of barrels of 
of an extra age version of Papa Teo, and frankly, it was amazing. It's yeah. definitely one of the best tequilas I've ever had in my life. Possibly no five, question. top five. Yeah, it's got to be in the top five. It's really, really good. Would I take that over OG YWL? Well, that is the. Ch- that's the I don't question. know. I don't know what I would do. Now, and Carlos made Tap X His father did. Yes, that was all Carlos. And that's why I say so, sometimes, sometimes experiments have some bumps, but sometimes. He totally hits the home run. And Tap X A is the perfect and, example. Excuse me, and which he's talking about cigar label, which is yet another blend. Excuse me, another blend of uh, that's Tapatio. Is it El Is it El Tesoro cigar label? Forgive me, because I wasn't on the trip. You know, I, I think it's I El know. I think it's El Tesoro. Which you know? Yeah, yeah which you'll What is it? Which is it El Tesoro? Uh, uh, but so and and which you had both. And of course, Witchy has been down to the distillery. Okay, so Witchy, here's my question to you. Are you ready? Are you ready? All right, he says something, so I think it is to me. Witchy. Tap XA. Cigar label. Which one? I think I know what you're going to say. Only from what I've heard. Uh, okay. So I'll let, I'll let Witchy talk about that. Uh, there was something else. Oh, so Kito was talking about Tap XA. Kito, have, have you tasted Tap XA? Yeah. Do you have a, do you have a bottle? Yeah. <laughs> Would you like to ship it to us? Yeah, and Witchy <laughs> says cigar. So he's saying cigar blend, no question. Okay. You know, so I was there on the first tour when he, when he broke those out, but it was so far into the week. You had the cigar label. I had a bowl, yeah. And oh. honestly, it's, it's so far in the past, and I was so spent from the rest of the week, I don't feel like I can make a good, make a good assessment. Well, I have something um, to tell you. Kinto says he's got a bottle of Tap X A. Uh, now, wait a minute. Wait, is it Excellencia yeah. or is it Faux Excellencia? Yeah, well, what is that? <laughs> uh, Kinto, before you... Uh, not that I don't believe you, and I'm very I'm very excited for you. Really, I, I'm not being a snob. I just want to know, what have you got? What does the bottle of Tap X A look like? What color is the oh, label? Hold on, he's got some... So Ray took one to Pedro's tasting. So it's not like he's tasted it, but maybe he doesn't own the bottle. Y'all... Oh, Y'all? you mean you've tasted it? Oh, oh Ray, Ray has a bottle. Uh, and Pedro oh, says Snickers. All right. Yeah, but, but what was that bottle? Is yeah. it the, I think it's full lens. Yeah. Could be full lens. No, yeah. it's good. So, so for those of you who aren't in the know, um, there's that the original Tap, Tap XA. Are we nerding out? And then we are totally fucking nerding out. And then at some point, um, there was a small shipment. I think this originally went to London, and then somebody managed to um, well, get. Import a bunch of bottles into. No, wait a minute. Quinto says he's got the second British Tap XA. Okay, Quinto, what I own is the second British Tap XA. It's a yellow label. That's what I own, uh, and that's Folencia. Then there's a there's the first UK, which is brown label uh, Tap you XA. Tell, you tell me, my uh, friend. Uh, oh, it's definitely it's brown label. Okay. Tonga has a bottle. Okay. Um, that's what I thought I was buying when I bought yellow label. Okay. So I have never tasted brown label. I've only tasted hand engraved Tap XA okay. in a glass bottle. No label. Right. So it's just engraved. So there you go. Uh, Quinto says the first is brownish. Uh, so, all right. No, no, no. Well, I, I won't say no, no. It's possible the brown label is the same juice. And it's, it's actually probable. The, the, the juice that's in the brown label is the same stuff that was in the glass etched. Okay. You know, they made a couple of special glasses. Because yeah. I got it at Tommy's. I mean, yeah. it's no mystery. Yeah. I got it at Tommy's, and I right. bought. I got a bottle at um, Swinkles. I drank with you, you nut. Did we have XA? I don't know if I had XA. I think I might have passed, because that was far Eric, tonight. And I'm like, Eric oh, Appleby, like, grabbed me. When I first walked in, that's the night I met you. Yeah. And he said, if you're going to drink anything tonight, drink this. And it was Tap XA. It's the first time I ever had. And it was also my first drink of the night, which... You know, looking back now, it was not the best way to go, but... Right, right. All right, anyway, all right. Uh, oh, this is great. Uh, all right, well, you guys figure that out. I see, I see you're, you're having a lot of discussions about Tap XA, and, and, I, and I, I, I love that. Anyway, there, there's a couple versions of Tap XA. The, the Faux Silencia, there's rumors about how, it, you know, single barrel versus blended versus American oak versus French oak. I don't know the whole story. There's definitely different variants of it. Um... Some are, they're all excellent. Some are a little better than others. You ready to uh, pop a score? I think so. Okay. I think, I think, and you know, then we'll find out where we want to, where, where we need to live. Okay. Um, okay, so Gabe was kind enough to bring a bottle of, um, now this is El Tesoro Paradiso. Let me give you a close-up of the label, first of all. We said we were going to go to all ages. Second thing I want to show you is the neck, uh, the neck collar. 
Do you see? Look at that. It's, it's kind of wine colored and purple. Right? Not, not so much the color, but the shape. It's Correct. A, it's, a, it's a foil, straight, you know, pretty straightforward, boxy kind of kind of label. This is an expensive uh, uh, grab a box, would you? Yeah. Because if you're watching this and you're 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 wanting to check out El Tesoro Paradiso, most times you won't see this bottle on the shelf. Most of the times it comes in this box. This was a super premium bottle, and, and it's still being produced. And it's produced in a box like this. So what you want to do, of course, is you want to open that box and look at this collar. It's going to be the first giveaway. This is an old bottle, Gabe. Tell our viewing audience what the new collar looks like. So well, so that the, the buzzwords in the uh, nerd nerddom of tequila forms is uh, this is the foil top because it's a foil it's kind of a straight top. The new ones are a wax top. So same basic color, maybe a little bit more red, um, but then you see like a little faux wax drips um, on on the label, and that's your main indicator. You could probably look at the lot numbers. This one is lot C zero zero eight two three. Um, now C is is like kind of the middle of the old. It's not the oldest label. Didn't we hear about that? So like, there's like there's a, B, I think a there's A B C. So this might be kind of the newest of the old foil tops. I've never done a, any side by side of the different lot numbers of Paradiso, but presumably there's similar lot variation um, compared to white label all the So yeah, yeah. so foil top versus wax top though. What's what's going on there? Well, foil top versus wax top. I wish I had a wax top here to, to do a side by side. We don't. We don't. But, but I, I, I will trust a lot of people who I do trust, I trust their palates, have told me and have told us that um, this top, the foil top, is the killer bottle. This is the one you want to taste. So I think we should pour this. Now, having is said that, that, that uh, open it up. Uh, let me let me do the rinse. Now, having mm -hmm. said that, um, yeah. last, I was in San Diego earlier this year and I met up with a couple, a couple guys for some drinks. And somebody broke out a, a bottle of the newer, the wax top of the Sora Parody. So, again, not a side by side, but but we tried it. And this is after many other tequilas, and that kind of closed the night oh, for fuck. me. And I kept going back, and <laughs> even the wax top was mind blowingly good. It was there was not a bad tequila. It was a great tequila. I don't know if it was on par with wow. the foil top, but it was great. No now, I was not prepared it. for this. Uh, the nose is very similar to um, Whoa, White yeah. Label and Yeho. Very Quito, similar. Quito Sol got a uh, foil top Paradiso for, for 90, 90 bucks. bucks. Good man, yeah. Price tag on this is uh, 110. I don't remember what how much it is. What was I going to talk about? Um, shoot. Uh, was it Zen Runner? Uh, I don't remember. Anyway, it'll come back to me. So, oh, I know what I was going to say. Uh, so, Carlos, Carlos Camarena, is talking about, Gabe talks about how he's an experimenter. And supposedly the story goes, the, um, the, uh, the, the urban legend, that someone asked him, or he was talking about cognac or something, and he said that uh, someone was saying to Carlos that uh, tequila will never reach uh, the levels of, uh, of sophistication that uh, good cognac can reach. And so he's aging this Paradiso in cognac barrels, correct? Yeah, I believe that's correct. I do too. So let's take a taste. And in terms of sophistication, just look at the look at the general bottle too. I, I think one of the things I like about El Tesoro is they don't they don't go real, even the olive oil bottles. They're not going out of their way to make this really gimmicky bottle. It's like it's classy. It's it says it's a bottle that gets its job done, and then the tequila speaks for itself. And I think the Paradiso is a good job. It's it's just a straight tall bottle with a an artistic label, and it's not trying to be all flashy or gimmicky. It's Let's the tequila do its, do its job. Yes, and do it well, it do! All right, now I'm going to pour this now, God damn it! All right, now, now here's the thing. I want you to think about what it tastes like. <laughs> All right, so we're tasting Paradiso. We've been through the Añejo. Now, luckily, I still have a little Añejo right here. Oh, man, I thought they were similar. They're not. I mean, they're similar. They're similar. I mean, they're tequila. They're aged. They're from the same distillery. Yeah, they're from the same distillery. Some guy. There's like some vanilla. Okay, the basic uh, white label añejo seems to be much more open to me. It's an open playing field. There are girls playing soccer on that field. Now we just uh, opened this bottle. Um, you, that's like the fourth. That's the fourth reference you brought up to, like, girls in bikinis. I didn't say you brought up bikinis. Well, you said, said hot, hot girls. I mean, what's going girls on here? Girls can be hot without bikinis. True. Inquiring minds want to know. Maybe the, the general populace 
our massive audience wants to know, are these the hot soccer girls or more butch? I'm more into the hot soccer moms at this point. I know we're in a different stage. Teach us all. Now keep. And no, there's nothing wrong with girls in bikinis. I'm just saying, that's that's not what I asked about. Now we just opened Lippie's this. putting words in my <laughs> mouth. What else? Do you want to put some more words in my mouth? Yeah, what am I tasting? Right, what am I smelling? Well, you're, gonna, you're smelling something that's a little... I think a little... Well, now hold on. As it's Okay, here, here's what I want to say to you all. We just opened this bottle. Also, Gabe, it's been very hot here today in California. And this bottle was very warm when he brought it in. It was well, warm. It was in my truck the whole afternoon. Yeah. yeah. It's, you know... Mm. Yeah. A good I, idea, I, but the cork was tight. It was it was unsealed. Or it was, it's clean. It's clean. It's clean. I think it's fine, but I think this needs to breathe a little bit. Um, so it's this one. So I'm smelling the sherry though. I, I yeah, smell, the, I'm the sherry. Something is going on in that. It's got a more directed taste. Where the the anejo and the and the rainbow, they've got directed. Got, Did you hear that? They've got, I, they've got this, this balance of a lot of stuff going on, and this one is maybe a little less complex and more just like. This, oh, this is the, this oh. is what I've got, and I don't, I'm not sure what the if it's the sherry or something else, but it's it's a little bit more. I don't want to say one dimensional; it's fewer dimensional. Instead of 18 dimensions, we're down to maybe 16, 15. Yep. All right. It's very it's very assertive. This is another. So the more the more El Tesoro ages, the more it's hit or miss for me. Mm. The Paradiso oh. even more than the white label El Tesoro. Some nights are like hell yeah, give me some more, and some nights are like ah, you're uh, I'm not to, in the mood for you. you I know? need to chill out because I'm too up, I'm way too uptight. Chillax. Yeah, I'm it's way cool. too uptight to be drinking Before this right now. Yeah. All right, hold on. Should we put this on the back burner and, and have a little uh, a little diversion? Maybe. All right. Yeah, which he says is totally gay. He's seeing you go down the road. All right. Well, what's totally gay? Uh, your description. All right, oh. no, wait a minute. <laughs> what, the, the 15 dimensions or? <laughs> 16. 16, maybe 15. This is some damn good tequila. Very good. You would not be embarrassed to pull this out at a baseball game in a flask, right? I don't know how to answer that. Like, if you were going to see your daughter's uh, chorus performance, and you had a flask of this, it'd be... Uh, I don't think I would ever put any Altazor in a flask. What happens when something's in a flask? Well, so, what's the first thing we did when we poured this tequila? Aerate. No. Uh, well, oh. Okay, we aerated it, but... Wow, there's a lot of complication going on here. What's, what's the first? What's our first contact with the tequila? We smell it. We smell it. Yes. How much? How much aroma do you get out of the flask? Oh, like someone's tight asshole. Yeah, yeah. Right? Which doesn't smell good. Let me tell you. It's um, constricted too. Yeah, very constricted. So, you're, you're missing. If, if you can't smell the tequila, you're missing a huge part of the experience. If, if you're talking about drinking good tequila, fact, it's fact. There's no, there's no way around it. If you want to drink good tequila, you've got to be able to smell it. You've got to be able to appreciate the aroma. Gabe, I'm going to go out on a limb here. Okay. I'm going to go out on a limb here. I'm going to say something. If you lock me in a room with Susan Sarandon, right, mm -hmm. and a bottle of El Tesoro White Label Añejo, or a bottle of El Tesoro Paradiso, I'm going for the White Label. I think I would too. The, the Paradiso is is introducing something onto the palate and um, it's not bad uh, it, it's adding a complication that is not making it more pleasurable to me that's the best way I can say it it's it's adding something that's that's um, kind of fine but it's 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 almost like hey look it's a cliche but if I say less is more that that and Añejo was just so complicated and so wonderful on its own. And when you put that Paradiso, there's a, there's a, I, I don't have the descriptor yet. I'll drink a little more. Well, let me let me say yeah. this. Yeah. yeah. The Paradiso is less tequila like than the than the White Label Añejo. The White Label Añejo, it's 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 aged. It's got a lot going on. It's got complexity, but it's still it's undeniably tequila. The Paradiso, it's getting these sherry and these cognac vibes and. Now it's strained a little bit from its tequila origins. You're getting and the sherry too, right? I don't, yeah, and I don't Ooh. think it's I don't think it's although I'm not a I'm not a huge sherry you know wine kind of expert or whatever. Um, so I'm, 
I'm less able to process these kind of flavors. But I think I think we've moved away a little bit further away than I really want to be from tequila. And that's why I agree with you. White label El Tesoro, that's where you want to be. I mean, it's really good. I, I, it, it's, at this point, I wish we had 70th anniversary. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Quinto, shut up! I'm a lot older than you, dude. I'm seeing things... You're not that, that old. old. I know. I'm like 32. You're, you're but I'm, I'm seeing things that you can't even imagine until you're my age. All right. All right. So I think you're right. We need to we need to table the the paradiso because it ain't bad, but it's it's, it's it's not the mind blow that everything else we've been always, drinking is. It's always my feeling with paradiso. Always. I've had no, I've had good nights with paradiso where it just it connected and paradiso is one of those ones where. Where uh, it'll sit for a long time at some level, and then boom, one third of the bottle disappears in one night, and then it sits for another, Paradiso, another no six months. Yeah, really? yeah. When it connects, <laughs> um, when it connects, it connects. When it doesn't, yeah. All right, what do we got for a uh, diversion here, Lippy? Hmm. Unlike Gabe, I'm willing to go. I'm willing to take it down. Uh, that was a Paradiso. Um, I got I got some stuff for you, Gabe. All right. It's gonna it's gonna flip your flipper. For my flipper. All right. I'm so uh, let me just uh, let me rinse this glass a little bit. So this is 10:15 rainbow. I'm uh, giving my, giving myself the available glass. Still very I just nice. got something that was delivered today. Today, UPS came to my door. Wow. And I was hoping it would arrive, and it did. I have something for Gabe to taste. Wow. And I'm gonna bring it out, and he has no idea that I'm about to pull this out. Up my ass! And it's not for the laser either. Are you gonna be blind? Are you gonna blind me? And do a blind tasting? Or I wish gonna, I could. If I were, if I were really cool, I would have blind tasted game. You can sell. You can sell. If you want, I'll close my eyes, and you can. Oh, you that's can, a you, great idea. I'm, I'm happy. That's to, a great idea. I'm happy Dave. to be humiliated on. Look, uh, this is so cool. TV. Right, so, so it's gonna take like a minute or two. Yeah. You're gonna have to fill some air here. All right, this is great. You oh, guys, I fill air. Are you guys ready for Gabe to do a taste? Oh, good. You get to hear Stevie Wonder. Yeah, rinse that one. I'll do. Well, you should do it on a reel. Do it on a reel. Okay. You gotta do it on a reel. Already the guests have flown in. Is it Stevie Wonder? Yes, Stevie Wonder. What, uh, oh, what era? 1973. What album? Uh, uh, fulfilling This is First Finale. Uh, I, don't know. I know a few of his albums, but not, not everything. This is after Superstition, right after that. Uh, and before, uh, before Talking Book? Or, or oh, right after, right after Talking Book. That's tough. Yeah, I think I have Superstition and Talking Book. Um, maybe one other. Is it Talking Book the double album? No, Pedro, that, that's a song's in the key of life. That's yeah. 76. Yeah. That's great. Okay, so Pedro says, uh, is it Sentinella? Pedro! Just just chill, baby. We're all going to figure this out at the same time, baby. Right. Now clean that, God damn it! All right, what do I have left? I'm, I'm aerating my water using our, our I have some original earlier. gangster here. You guys do not want to... Nobody wants to miss this. This is a blind tasting for games. This is... Lippy's gonna bend me over. I will tell he's you. He's gonna give me like hornitos, and yeah, I'm gonna, gonna be like, give you my, my big fucking hornito. Whoa. Um, <laughs> you said bend over. Uh, I will tell you this, Gabe. It's a, it's an añejo. That's as much as I'll say. Okay. Witchy's into it. Zen runner, Zen runner. What are you thinking, baby? This is it. I'm gonna, 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 there's a little bit more cooked agave than anything else we've uh, we smelled today. You smell that like, almost like it's on the verge of burning. I'm getting Indian food. Indian food? Yeah, I thought that the, um, I thought the silver white label had the most agave. I still do. Even more than that. Even more than the OG. The OG is its own fucking beast. And it's beautiful. If I could have one tequila for the rest of my life, if God came down and said, dude, you're drinking too much, I'm only going to give you one brand and you can have one glass a day. Your, your desert island tequila, if oh. you will. Yeah. I'm, I'm going there. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, uh, Zen Runner is actually working while he's watching this. Okay, Zen Runner, I love you, baby. I love your dedication. I know this show's going so long. All right. Come on, clean out a glass. I gotta, I gotta pour some. Oh, that, no, it was a riddle you gotta pour. You gotta clean it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry. I drank it. I just didn't clean it out. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Patience, patience my friend. Right. Whatever happened to Maria Jose? Hey, everybody. 
Before I say more, and which you gave me a second. I'm not even waiting for your reply. All right, we're gonna pour just a little bit more of the OG White Label El Tesoro. No! So, yeah, much to uh, is chagrin a bad thing or a good thing? I forget. I think it's a bad thing. Much to your chagrin. Does that make sense? All right. Pour a, just a little bit more uh, OG white label El Tesoro. The finest of the fine. All right, so uh, tequila folks out there, what are you drinking? I know Zen Runner, you're uh, you're hitting the books, you're staying on task. Witchy, Quito Sol, Pedro, what are you guys drinking right now? Where are you at? Ah, let me come back. That is a. Uh, it's a healthy pour. That's what they call a current pour, I think. Yeah, well, I... So, I, I, c compare my, my modest OG white label you, pour... You poured that OG, you billy! It was like that when I got it. Versus uh, the Mystery Añejo. That is a light Añejo. My, it's a very light my Añejo. Hope, my hopes are high already, because it presumably has a very light touch. Give it, um... Yeah, well, let's give it a couple minutes to... to you, you want to air out? Air out? Okay. Yeah, because it, it's a... I will say, it's a new bottle. Okay. Uh, just, uh, just received it today, and, okay. um... It's been sealed. I've just opened the seal. So okay. let's give it like five to minutes. Sure. Yeah. All right. So reports are Pedro's drinking some uh, El Sol and Yeho. Quinto Sol is drinking uh, olive oil, mm. 1031 Blanco. Interesting. Whoa. And uh, Quinto Sol calls this a, a Pedro pour. Um, I'm going to go with Kern pour because uh, respects the Kern. Because it respects the Kern. But great doctor. Also an honorary uh, Pedro pour as well. And which he's got a white label and Yeho going on, which I totally respect. Um, yeah, so in the meantime, I mean, um... Baby, are you, did you refill your, uh, white list? I don't know where I am. No, this is my OG. This is, uh... This is, uh, I think this is white label. This is white label Añejo. Yeah. Mm. That's really good. I'm glad that I have, like, 40 or 50 bottles of that left. It is really good. Añejo? Or, or in general? I wish. No. That's about how much uh, white label I have. I know, so, I know about you. Uh, you know, your white label ways. Yes. I, I know which. I know which. I know which treasure phone you to bet on. Can you believe that? Like, there was a point where I was at uh, PNS Liquor and, and saw 15 bottles of white label silver. They had that many? Oh yeah. Wow. When I was there and didn't buy them. Yeah. Yeah, you're a fool. C crazy. You're a fool. Crazy. All right. So, um, what's this? Let me know if I look retarded when I'm like, uh, like. Now here's something. I thought maybe you might want to go somewhere. Should I should I throw in the uh, Fortaleza repo? Should I give oh, it to the, him? The La Five. Uh, yeah. Not now. Let's save that for the end of the show. Yeah, maybe so. Maybe so. We don't we don't want to we don't want to shock uh, Pedro here. 
or keep it slower. Whoever knows you're going to end the show that way. Oh, wow. All right. I, I, I hesitate to keep going to this, but this is, I will say, this is, uh, well, I won't say anything because then you'll know. So is, this ready, is this ready to go, you think? No, no, no. no. Give it, give it really. We, we need to give it a look. So we All need right. to go somewhere. Yeah. So, um. I thought we were going somewhere, but apparently we saw. You have an empty glass? Um, yeah. Yeah, I have an empty glass. Because we got to go somewhere just for a second. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to take you somewhere. Okay. Should I close, just my, to go close my eyes and imagine my special place? Yeah. Where I'm safe and comfortable and warm. Witchy's calling you a forta whore. That means you're a forta laser whore. Right. So look, I got a couple of things here. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if this is if we're ready for this. Um, I know we're not ready for that. Okay, so this is, of course, I've tasted this before on the show. This is um, uh, Pueblo Viejo Old Label uh, Repo, and I really dig it. Uh, but not tonight. It's it's. Um, I don't know, honestly. Like Pueblo, Ve the old Pe Pueblo Viejos. Um, I've been really getting into those lately, especially in Viejo. Oh yeah. Um, but I don't know if they can hold their own against no Alcazara. way. I just I smelled it. I like, so like, sorry, you smell it. I didn't, I didn't mean to take that away. They're, from they're, uh, they're, they're something like you, you open it's up, you drink it, you enjoy a movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but but not too bad. It's I still feel like I mean look at the color of this. It's it's not ridiculously dark. This is still the Reposado. Um, but I I still feel like this exemplifies the light touch. They're not getting too carried away with the aging, but it's it's not as macho as and complex as the El Toro. Oh wow, you're right though. It's if way too that, woody, right? This, it this feels very like a bourbon or yeah. something. Real Hacienda. This is Los Lobos. That's why I brought these guys out for the end. All right, so All right. put that aside. All right, so I think that's here's up. something. Here's something I want to. I want to. I want to get Kate's cake on. Now, have you ever had this Berwico? Repo? Berwico. 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 Um, Berwico. So you, you guys have all seen this before. This is my Berwico Repo blend. So I just opened a bottle. I'm trying to remember if it's a Yeho or Repo. I think I just opened it. I posted something on the forum. What did I say? Yes, you did. You opened like, a Repo. I'm like bubble, I'm like bubble block compelling. Yeah, okay. Um, it was is really interesting. Uh, yeah. yeah. Check this out. This is a good place to go to because it's very different from where we did. Yeah. And so, so my comment. So I, I, I mentioned like blah, blah, blah. Oh, party foul. Oh, look, it's built. Um, so I had this, and then like a couple nights later, I opened a bottle of Costa 1431 Repo. And I'm like, yeah, it kind of reminds me of the Repo. Costa 1431. So this, that's the one I like. I seem to be the only one on the planet that thinks Costa 1431 Repo is awesome. Mm -hmm. But I do. Interesting. All right. So this is Berwinkle. That is cool. That's the end of that. Oh. There's the poor people. Rest in peace, my friend. Rest that is a soldier that has done his job. And Kito says Costa Weber. What about Costa Weber? I've heard great things about that. Uh, I had that once with uh, Tequila Joe. Uh, so Which one's Costa Weber? I'm it, drawing a blank there. Uh, Co Costa Weber um, Añejo. The Costa Weber. Uh, 1146. You have a bottle of that, don't you? Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> My trade bank, quiet. <laughs> uh, so what she says, what's all gone? The, uh... I bet that's my daughter. Hello. Hey, the family's here! Did you bring my pizza? Hello. <laughs> Alright, we'll catch up with you in a minute. Now listen. Um, what's all gone? Witchy, what's all gone? I think he's talking about your, uh... Oh, yeah. What do you think? Um, honestly, so that was... Very, di very distinctive, very pretty distinctive. macho. I think next to the competition, I think it's holding up really well. It, it is it's definitely it's not, a place not, to go. That's the why Pueblo is like, no, no, you can't, you it, can't, you like, can't compete. It's, it's like, like a textbook oak. It's just a, a plank of oak. This has got a lot of complication going on. Yeah, there's real I complexity there, stuff. and there, there's also a subtle spike of, of flavor that I, I can't quite What is it? Is it uh, maybe uh, like a buttery popcorn? No, no, not at all. That buttery pop, there's like a little a bit there. There's, yeah, I'm getting a little bit there, but that's not the that's not the spike. I'm, right. I'm, that's not the spike I'm picking up. The spike I'm picking up is more. more I want to say vegetal, but that's not the right word. I don't. Macho is tequila. So macho is a great word for describing tequila. I like tequilas that are macho or muy macho and complex. Casanova Crystal 
macho, very macho, not as complex as it used to be. El Tesoro, both macho and muy macho and muy complexo. If I may uh, do some Spanglish. Um, Spanglish! <laughs> but this, is, this is also very macho. Very. I stand by my description. It's compelling. It's it like, is. I don't, it it's is. like, you are unique. You're a unique sunflower. Am I? Oh. You're, you're just a guy who has a video camera. I'm gonna have tequila all over my hands because I spilled my Berwaco. So, uh, that, that, that almost seems silly, but um, I've definitely seen Ticaleros, including Carlos. Um, they'll pour a little bit on their hands and rub it, and let the alcohol evaporate, and kind of smell their hands. I'm not, I don't have enough extra tequila to do that, but. Um, Shake a bone! Who's this? Los Lobos. Los Lobos. You said that already. You sang the song. I should pay attention. No, no, that's right. Okay. You know, when I look at my iTunes listing and I, I look at who do I have the most music by, it's Los Lobos. Really? These guys just speak to me in my soul. Maybe grassy? Which is the grassy? There's, there's some thread here that's kind of common to the, the Costa that I really love. And the Costa is like this, the Costa Repo, 1431, is kind of grassy, light, really damn drinkable. It's, it's not as macho, but it's just like, yeah, yeah, I like that. It's more. You know the ladies like the Berwaco. Really? The ladies love Berwaco. Really? You start feeding Berwaco to ladies, things are going to change, you know? You're going to get stabbed in the back. But they've done that, my friend. What they do? They smile in your face all the time. They want to take your place. The backstabbers. Oh, so many of these for Red Label Chinaco. I totally respect you. Eat the salt. Red Label Chinaco is an another member of the my... The weakest of, my, of the three for me. For me, the blonde was the weakest. Oh. But the, the old label Chinacos are the second of my holy, the second member of my holy trinity of tequila treasure. I agree. When we went to um, a Familia Fest, uh, and I got, uh, luckily, I got all three ages of Chinaco Awards, and the red was... They had all up? They had them all up? Oh, sure, sure. Uh, uh, it was the Añejo, and that's what I usually get, excuse me, when I go to Tommy's, if I'm coming in, and I only go to Tommy's like once every two or three months, if that, right. and the first thing I'll order is uh, Chinaco Green Label, okay. Añejo. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I start there, and then, but you know what I'm going to get next time, if, uh, if the, the forces will allow... Is um, I want that regional, Re regional ninety-eight. Oh, all that old stuff. I've had a hankering for that. Regis. Get to get it while you can, right? Well, yeah, I can only get it. Tommy's never gonna get it in the store. That's what's going. Cool. Yeah. All right, keep the soul. Didn't you get uh, cool? Okay. So we're drinking some Berwick. This is cool. This is kind of um, resetting our palate a little bit. What she says, uh, send me your Blancos. You know, I only have one Blanco left. I don't hate it. I just think the, the Repo is better and the Añejo. I'm fucking, well, not unbeatable, but really, really Thanks, amazing. Thanks, Davis. All right, I'm, uh, I'm jumping at the bit here to try this mystery, right, give it a smell. mystery Añejo. Let's see what you think. Maybe I'm, I think I'm going to clear my palate here. So, immediately, this is really light for any I hope. That intrigued me. I like the light touch. I'm a little worried that because the pour is so high, it's going to throw a little bit more alcohol and other stuff in my face. Fair enough. I find that... You know, if that pour is too big for you, Dave, you can pour it in my, my glass. If I'm not man enough yeah, for your, for your no, pour. No, it's not a problem. You can put it right in my glass and I'll deal with it. I do feel like my... Uh, yeah. Tasting skills are deteriorating. Well, a little bit. We've had so much El Tesoro, and it's been so much of the same kind of flavor profile. Now we're about to like just power into something that is completely different. Very nice. Definitely not as macho. Yeah. Oh, it's man. So, so good. It's a lot less uh, fuerte. A lot. It's got a little bit of nuttiness. Celery? You getting celery? No. Well, I am not getting celery. You madman. You madman! I'm nutty. I, I'm getting some pine nut. I'm getting some nuttiness. There's a little bit of nuttiness going on. Something that, I, that I've experienced in some of the uh, older Chinacos. I'm going to say, Chinacos. what I smell in here is not that different. It, it's not It's not like Berwaco, which was very different for me. This Berwaco 
is very singular to me. And um, so, yeah, that's a good word, singular. Yeah, and I'm finding that this is not. Um, but let's see what happens. You know, let's see how it progresses. So, so I'm going to try a little a little trick. Um, this is something I learned the first time I went to. This was actually at Jose Cuervo at, at La Rojena, their their Disneyland facility. They showed us that if you kind of tip the glass, so you have a, any, you know, a Riedel is a good glass, but even if you have more of a brandy snifter, you tip the glass, and if you sniff at different heights, you get different aspects of the tequila. And I think the main reason is that you're, when you see it, it tipped like this, you're at different distances to, to the tequila. So towards the top, you're going to smell more wood. Towards the middle, you're going to smell more agave and spill it on yourself. And towards the bottom, you're going to smell just more it's of It's a alcohol. $700 bottle. Yeah. You bitch. Um... So if you if you're at home and you have a, a, a fancy schmancy glass and you want to try it out, um, it's most prominent with the Indiejos, and you kind of think like that's stupid, that's not going to work, and you do it, and you're like, wow, that's actually pretty cool. I can totally pick out different flavors based on the height that I'm at at the glass. So I'm going to give that a try and see what sticks out. Okay. And again, I'm, I'm this, this heavy pour is totally fucksoring me. As, as Dude, pour it in my glass. So I could, what do you want me to like, kiss your ass or they give you a heavy pour? Fuck! So very, to me, very nutty. Kind of nutty on the bottom. Kind of like a Don Julio or, again, an old Chinaco. I could see a Chinaco, but, but, but not quite as um, spicy as Chinaco. Yeah, not super spicy. Agave, agave is decent, but not, not mind-blowing. seems to be a lot of interest in a very small space. Uh, probably the smallest space that we've had tonight. Uh, yeah. Right? Yeah. It's like, very it's all defined. happening here. Yeah. Doesn't mean it's bad, but it means, yeah, it's not expensive. It's not. It's not. Not very woody at all. So I'm, no, I'm, at, the top, I'm at the top of the glass, and I'm getting very little wood. That that Pueblo Viejo Rainbow, oh, come sniffing on. that out of the out of the out of the the slow pour top was much more Which woody. Was horrible. It smells like a gasoline engine. Much much more woody than oh, than I I'm experiencing. Right you can't even smell it out of the top. Yeah, I hate that. I don't like the slow pour. No, no, no. It smells like plastic. It's horrible. All right. All right. So I'm gonna go for my first taste here. So Witchy thinks it's Buscadores. Witchy, the first time I ever tasted Buscadores was from you. Thank you. And, it, and I was a fan, and I still am a fan. Did, did, did Witchy ship you some Buscadores lately? <laughs> Just out of curiosity. Nobody told me what it was. It definitely doesn't have that same singularity as the, the Buscadores. Or not Buscadores. I'm thinking the Oreco. Or Waco, or however you pronounce it. I'm embarrassed that I always make fun of people who don't know how to pronounce basic tequila words, like El Torizo, or I was in a, I was in a tequila bar in, in Sacramento, or it was a it was really a dive bar. They happen to have a good tequila selection, and one of, one of the guys is going there, and he, one of the guys is like, oh, we have 300 tequilas, and we have, you know, I know a lot about tequila, and he's like we have blancos, resposados, and right then I'm, I'm like, Resposado. yeah, I'm like, you don't even know, like, not that I'm. Uh, fluent in Spanish or, or I'm right, still, I'm still I'm a gringo, gringo but just so you know. All right, I'm going. go in. Um, if you can't even pronounce the basic aging types, maybe you have a little more. I had a really, I had a, I had a, uh, I had a, like a, I had a miscarriage. I had a miscarriage taste. Doesn't happen often, but I sipped, I, I sucked in too much air and it sucked it down in my throat. Hold on. Your lungs are living. Yeah, everybody chill. So I'm getting more, more butter popcorn. So I'm getting that kind of taste and finish. There's so just like, like not, not intense, but uh, a light butter popcorn kind of, kind of flavor going on. Expansive in the upper levels to me. There's not a lot of floral nose no. and sweetness. I mean, I can smell any of these Altisoras and I want to sniff that all night. And I come over here to this mystery and it's good, but yeah, it's lower. Yeah, it's lower in in its uh, all of its interest. I don't find it to be as hot as Altisoras. I just did the, I just did a brief deep throat yeah. and yeah. Uh, it was much much softer than than the Altisora when I did it. Really? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah alright. Maybe, maybe I just had less, maybe it was a quantity thing. I didn't have quite enough on my on my tongue. I saw some but the finish was, the finish was kinda 
It's okay, but not not like a mind blow. Right. Although, all right, so there's a sweetness here. Now, I will say, now here we are at the end of a long season. So they're requesting I, I leave the room, and then you, you fill them in on the secret. You want, you want to do that real quick? I'll go out, I'll step out for a minute, I'll plug my ears, and then you can tell them what I'm drinking. Okay. So they can all mock sure, me sure. While, while I, while I help her analyze. All right, go out that door and shut the door. Okay. Are you guys ready? Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Costa Weber Azul. 1146 Añejo Treasure Bottle. Yeah. Alright, now don't you guys type about it. Yes. Right? Don't fuck with us. Yeah. Now, who, so Witchy, you got it? Are we good? Yeah, right. everybody knows what, what's up? Okay. Yeah, okay, okay. Witchy says sweet. Right. Okay. Alright, so, now, now, thanks. That was a great idea. It's great that you guys know. Yeah, oh, yeah, I like I like putting everybody else in on, on the on the Shut up, just don't even don't even give any kind don't worry. of don't worry, I'm not Yeah, just, don't even I'm, give I'm, any kind I'm, of emotional I'm, 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 I'm reaction, good. like good or bad. Alright. <laughs> oh, Alright. Alright. So now this is interesting because I, I and I'm not trying to put you on the spot. I, I will I have ha- I, let, let me just say I've had this tequila once in my life. One time. Okay. And um, it was at a commercial place, it was at a bar. Okay. And I had about three drinks before I had this. I thought it was really good. Okay. Um, I will say it did not it did not grab me even like El Tesoro, even at the time. But I felt like, man, there's something here that is really speaking to me, and I want to come try it again. Okay. And I was never able to try it again. Okay. And so, okay. I, and then I found a bottle online and I bought it. Um, it ain't queer. Um, and I found a bottle. It's definitely not. Yeah, and I found a bottle, I and know. it just got delivered. I swear to God, today, nice. UPS. Nice. And I was so happy that you were here. Nice. Now, so my feeling on it, even now you guys all know what it is, my feeling is um, this bottle or El Tesoro White Label Añejo. Um, where do I want to go? I mean, I, I might go to the White Label. That's why I say. Should we have had this first? Like, you know, we've had such a history here. Right. It's really influencing. So I, I don't, yeah, I don't think this holds up to the white label of Sorrel. Mm-hmm. It's, but, but who can do that, right? Seriously. Who can do it? Who can do it? Old label Chinaco, maybe. Old label, uh, my, my third member of the Trinity, old uh, Millennium Edition Oro Azul. That's, that's about the only competition here. Um, what? Those, 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 those two are the only other. Now I will say. Now I'm going to say something. Uh, oh. Now we've been drinking this. Have you had a couple sips? Yeah, definitely. This stuff is pretty fucking good. It's pretty solid. Now I will say. All right, I'm not trying to influence you, so I should shut up. Tell, guys, tell me to shut up. Uh, Quinto, wait. Quinto is talking about Vida de Romero. I know where there's two bottles of that. Is that any good? Does he have a misto? I've never had it. Yeah, what's the story? So, okay, so my... maybe maybe he's joking. Okay, please repeat the Oro Azul one more time. Okay, so my my holy trinity of treasure is three things. So what people that like don't have a lot of a lot of tequila nerdiness, I tell them you look for three things. You look for white label El Tesoro. You look for old label Chinaco, so green or red label. Which and, is this? And you um and you look for Oro Azul Millennium Edition. Yeah. Now wait, which he, everything but, else is is nice to have, but those three buy on site, don't ask questions, never leave anything behind. Yeah, that's exactly. my holy trinity. And and which which this Viuda de Romero, I know that there's some hundred percent that's not a misto. Um, it's like a 25th anniversary bottle. I know where there's a bottle of that. Tell me about that. Have you ever had it? If you've only had the misto, maybe I should go buy this bottle because it's not expensive. It's like forty bucks ish. Okay. Uh, maybe we'll buy and we'll do another show. Yeah, what's the noun number there? Yeah, uh, uh, well, Quinto says he's got two. I don't know. Right, I don't know the noun. I don't. Uh, I gotta figure. Miss Witchy says it's misto only. Shut up, Witchy. Quinto, is you is are yours misto? Let's let's find out about now. Witchy says grab it. He says grab it if it's hundred percent. I'll check it out. I'll go check it out and yeah. make sure it's hundred percent. Eleven, eleven, right. eleven. Pedro, isn't that isn't that reaching out? Eleven, eleven. All right, now let's... Weak, weak. Gabe. I thought you knew your shit. Gabe, what do you think about this? Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to put... Here we go. Wait, wait, this is the thing. It's like, put Gabe on the spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
put uh, Gabe on. I have the been spot. humiliated many times after long bouts of drinking, and then this let's is, give Gabe a mystery yeah, sample. This, this is going and to I, I have been, for the record, I have been humiliated with Pornitos. And I think, and I think also Jamie really? Wagner is like, that's oh, not bad. Jamie Wagner, <laughs> nah, very hot. I'll say that. Very, very, very it's, hot. It's had its moments, but not a not a caper when all is said and done. All uh, right. Witchy's drinking mystery. Witchy, did you mystery yourself? I bet your wife. Your wife is so cool. All right. So she Witchy has it. That narrows it down so much. Mm. Yeah, Witchy, tell us. <laughs> all right. Uh, what's your what's your mystery? Um, it's okay. So, well, because we're gonna we're starting to wrap it up here, folks. I'm sorry. I know we're having yeah, a great like time. Our show. Yeah. I know. Let's, that's cool. I like it. Um. All right. So we're gonna. What do you think? What would you drink this? Yeah. Would you order, absolutely. Would you order it in a bar? Absolutely. Very drinkable. Well, would I order it in a bar? I don't know if the answer is yes to that. To me, so I, I find bars are pretty hard places to assess tequila. So there's so much noise. You've got food going on, and, and and even the Tommy's experience, which is an incredible tequila bar. Like sometimes I'll drink something and get it, and other times like eh, like I ordered a that four year Chinaco, you know, Green Label. Yeah. Didn't work it's for tough. me. Yeah, I know it's very hard. And it that is. was not a cheap shot. Let me tell you, my friend, yeah. that was not a cheap shot. Oh, yeah. Thank um, you for for um, me taste it. I will say that. I'm not ready to, and I have said this on your behalf, I'm not ready to make a definitive uh, 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 opinion on this tequila from one tasting. I want, I want it, I want to taste it again, I want to taste it perhaps first, I want to taste it after it's been open for a couple of days and weeks. Um, it, it's good, it's not garbage, by any means. It's, I, I like it. I think it has a really good balance. So it, it is more on the. It's a little more on the nutty side. I feel it's more on the Chinaco vibe. It's hard to come off of all of this El Tesoro, yeah, which was really over here, and like there's yeah. a lot. This is a little bit it's more very restrained. Fuerte, this, this. Now, El Tesoro is, is muy macho, and this is this is macho. It ain't it ain't subtle. It, it's not well, it's, it's not like it's not weak, but it's. It's a little more subtle than Nelson. Yes, Toro. I agree. It's, it's, it's very, not it's very weak. drinkable. It's like the Paradiso, we're like, we can't drink this all night. It's it's too much. No, no, no. This no, one, there's something. I could totally go through a third of a bottle of this. Yeah, and, and you don't and want to be pretty happy. You'd yeah, be, you'd be very. I'm, I'm not driving home, but uh, but. Uh, Witchy, I know you want to go all night. I'm going to go all night, and this is a four-hour show. All right, let's just, we got two more hours. We're going to drink a bunch of other stuff. Now, listen. I like it. I like it. That's the bottom line. I, all right, think, it, I think it's it. pretty good. I'm going to tell you something. I like it, too. I like it a lot. And I would drink this on any night. If someone, came, if I went over to the house and they said, look, I yeah. just found uh, something called a Geo. And I said, oh, you mean a And they said, yeah, somebody gave me this. Um, and I drank it. Yeah, this is totally... Totally drinkable, and I, I don't. I could totally see myself in the right mood. Just again, going through a third, of, third of a bottle, like watching TV, you know, Seinfeld repeats or a good movie, and being like, yeah, that was a great night of tequila watching or tequila drinking and TV watching. Which is only I had a woman. Which is part timer <laughs> loves this stuff. Okay. Hmm. The plot. So, the plot. Now let me ask you guys: Should I tell him what it is, or should I bring him the bottle? And make me feel it out and try to try to guess from the bottle. Ah, that would be great. <laughs> is it, is let's it a shapely let it, bottle? Let's let it go on one more step, right? Let, let me bring him three bottles, and I'll ask him. Uh, Pedro says, "Give him some hints." Okay. I like the idea. Of taste, taste. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, awesome. 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 <laughs> um, I think I should bring like three bottles out. And have Gabe. I have to figure out which one it is. Decide of, of, which of those is. three. Uh, I'm Gabe. Again, I, I might I might be about to get bent over and spanked, but. Um. Blindfolded bottle feel. Yeah. All right. All right. I hope you have some bikini bottles. Yeah. Help these guys out for a second. Ooh. All right. So I want I want to know. Um. Um. What's my likelihood of being totally humiliated in the next five minutes? By him giving me like Cuervo Misto or or Salsa, my ultimate hatred. I can't stand anything Salsa made. I've never had a Salsa that I really liked. Any votes? Am I am I gonna be humiliated? Nothing yet. Come on. Fair to medium. Which he thinks that's pretty likely. I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna get put in my place. Quinto Soul says it's Triada. That would be pretty humiliating. If, th if this was Triada, I think I would be kind of ashamed. 
You got multiple bottles. Oh, you're a smart man. You're a smart man. Aha. Ooh. Okay, folks. Wow. Gabe is drinking one of these three. He is drinking Fortaleza. Oof, that. He's drinking Fortaleza Lot. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's drinking Fortaleza Lot Five Ripo. Ooh, you devil! You devil! Or Fortaleza hand. Is he drinking 1921 Reserva Especial, which is their uh, añejo, wax top, uh, hand lettered? Or is he drinking, my friends, Costa Blue Weber Añejo 1146? All right, I'm gonna nix this immediately. You're gonna nix that. So I, I've been, and which he has, and you've been there. You've been to, you've been to Oro Azul. I've right? been to Oro Azul, of course. Yes. Yeah, and their tequila. Uh, the thing I loved about Oro Azul, their distillery, it's in. Uh, I don't think it's in Aranda's proper. It's in the Highlands. It's in, in the Highlands. Um, yes. uh, Jesus Maria, right? Yes, Jesus Maria. Jesus Maria. Um, and I, they showed us a wonderful reception. They gave us home cooked, well, probably home cooked, but they gave us really good food in, on, their, on their family china and their hacienda. It was a wonderful experience. They let us ride their horses. Um, and there, like, the, the smell of their distillery and the taste of the tequila, it was such an amazing connection. Like wow, I can't believe how how much this their tequila tastes like their distillery smells. Blew my mind. And that does not taste this does not taste like that distillery smells. Really? So I'm, I'm gonna mix it. I could be wrong because that's an older product and they're you know the, the production might have evolved and and blah 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 blah. But uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna mix the 1921. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say I don't think it's 1921. Fair enough. I guess that leaves Fortaleza. So that leaves, yeah, that leaves Costa. Fortaleza or Costa, and this is the 1146 Costa. This is 1146 Costa. So a little Costa history. Costa has gone through a big brand history. This name, um, this is the yeah, this is the 1146 version. There's a little kind of agave looking thing in the um, uh, you know, kind of hand blown agave. Maybe it's hand blown, maybe it's not in the glass. Um, I'm a fan of Costa 1431. For that, these are non numbers we're talking about, which is pretty damn good. Um, but I, haven't I don't think I've ever had that. I, I, should, I, I meant to bring it, but I kind of got caught off guard. That's for the Costa font. Yeah, exactly for the there. Costa font. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's also a Costa from 1173. Not so hot in my opinion. Um, yeah, sorry. Sorry. It's the only font I got. Um, but the 1146 has high praise from many tequila aficionados. Many people. I've never sat down. I've tasted it once at Swickless. It was kind enough to open oh, it. Oh, really? Um, but that was well into a long night, so I have no idea at the time. I like it. Ah, good. Um, well, 1431 I like. Um, it's gone through 1420, which I'm sure is completely mediocre. Um, yeah, that, I didn't buy that one. I yeah. went to 1173 or whatever it was. Yeah. 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 1431 is, is where it's at. Alright. Alright. So, 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 according to Gabe, you can whittle it question. down to well, yeah. two. It's either Fortaleza, and luckily I gave him, I have an unsealed bottle because I have a couple bottles of these. So, I know exactly what this smells like. Honestly, I do I do think it's, I'm going to go out on a like, well. I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, be vulnerable. I'm gonna, I am gonna guess Costa because I think the Fortaleza, I think would have been sweeter. This has a, like a more earthy and, and like nutty taste, and I don't think that's a Fortaleza vibe. I don't get any Fortaleza Blanco coming out of this, and I don't get in some of the sweetness that I expect in a in a aged Fortaleza. So my guess is gonna be that it's it's Costa 1146. I know Witchy has a bottle or two. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right. Guess what it is, baby? You're drinking Costa, 11:46. And I will say it's it's pretty yes, it's pretty darn good. Pretty darn good. Yeah. Now it's, it's now hard coming off of this, uh, you know, the the elders of El Tesoro, but 
so now I have to think hard about whether if I had a bottle, which I may or may not, which if I if I should trade it away or drink it myself. You better think about you better think a lot hard about that because um, what you need to do is drink this straight when you haven't had a a runway of Delta Soro. No, it's it's really good. I got I gotta say it's it's so there's there's like your first taste of something and when you first taste something like things that are sweet, so like Cup Lovely Crystal, I'll pick on that again, like the, the new the newer recipe. Your first drink is like, wow, it's great, it's bold agave, and then after a while you're like, whoa, it's kind of cloying, yeah. it's a little too much. It's something you can drink all night long, something you can take out of a third of a bottle, a quarter of a bottle. It's like, it's got that, there's that drinkability factor, like, can I, can I enjoy this over on the patio, you know, hanging out with my, with my housemates, or can I, uh, can I enjoy this throughout the course of a long yeah, movie? Could you, could you be in a hot tub? Yeah. You know, drinking this with your lover. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this well, still has that. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's that's good. fucked up, my friend. So <laughs> what's wrong with you? That's good stuff. Um, very good stuff. Um, so Pedro says now I know you don't need one of those, Lizzie. Pedro, don't be so don't be so 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 quick to uh, judge. I'm always looking for another Costco 1146. This is good stuff. And I'm, uh, Thanks for sharing that. I know that's this is. So this is two amazing treasures to let me share with me. He shared with me OG White Label Blanco and Costa 1146, which is not easy to come by. Not at all. This is not something I've I would never share this. found this. I'm happy to share it with you, buddy boy. Um, and I'm happy to share it with any of you. Next time you're in Marin County, look me up. Drop me an email. Lippy at tequilawhisperer.com. We'll get together and taste. Do what we gotta do. Now, so so so, uh, Witchy, you, you you've got a bottle, outside. you've got a bottle of this open, is that right? Uh, share with us. What do you think? What it, is my my course tasting assessments on the mark or way off or you know, give me give me a little love here. Tell me what you're thinking. Uh, Lippy, uh, yeah, Witchy, did, was I was I going like this? <laughs> was I out of the frame? All right. So here's something I want to do. Now I know we've been through a lot of stuff. I want us to get let, let's get those two toe glasses. First. Okay. Well, I, I want Gabe and I to finish off with some Fortaleza <laughs> for for uh, Pedro or who, who, who's that? Who, who knows you? Uh, I forget who was. Oh, they all know me. They all know every okay. fucking show because now here's the thing with this. Well, hold on, I want to. So so what you saying? Sawdust on the nose. And I did I did see that earlier. I, I didn't respond to it because I didn't know if I totally agree with it. Let me give me give me. Like ten seconds to, to smell and think about it. All right, Pedro. I know you got to go. Thanks for joining us, Pedro. We'll word, see man. you soon. Yeah, thanks for joining us, man. Appreciate it. Excellent. I'll, I'll give you the sawdust, but I think I think it sounds worse than it is. Like ah, oh, sawdust. It's like wet cement. Like wow, that sounds really appealing. I, I'll give you the sawdust, but um, it's a good thing. It's a good sawdust. Oh, Not yeah. a bad Alright, alright, alright. <laughs> anyway, as, as you were, Lippy. Alright, now. Cedar, I'm not getting that on. Oh, were you talking about the Costa? We're still, yeah, we're still on Costa. We're, we're no, way behind you. No, Slow I'm down, not. My I, I, I'm not getting anything on that. Oh what, what time zone are cedar. you? Cedar. Hey. What, what time zone are you in? Richie, are Richie, you, you're in Toronto? Cedar. I'm getting some cedar. I can feel that. I'm really? Yeah, I can kind of see that. Totally. Cedar. Very good. Cedar sawdust. The sawdust. Cold, I get, cold I, 18 a.m.? You're the man. Yeah, I get, I get more sawdust on the nose than the taste. So, Witchy's got, got a bottle of this? Apparently. Like, I can open, I can drink this. I, I drink this all the time. Witchy! You don't, you don't have a stash for this? You know, Witchy did some pretty serious treasure hunting in like the Buffalo, New York area or, or thereabouts. He was in Texas. In Texas, yeah. He a lot of stuff. Witchy Texas. gets around. Don't, don't, don't uh, overlook Witchy. Witchy says he's got one. Just one. Just one to drink and one to look at and one other one to set to trade. You want to trade me for this one, Witchy? If you've got an OG white label Blanco, 
Tilt he does, he does. But he's saving it for posterity. Ah, uh, posterity, posterity. And Witchy, you have this, right? And I know you've seen my, I, I think you've seen my other show, right? I talk about this Reserva Special, wax top, hand, handwritten uh, lot number. If you don't know about this stuff, I mean, I know you know the distillery and stuff, but if you don't have a bottle of this, think about it. Um, this is a great bottle. All right, now, Gaby Baby. Yeah. Uh, I, you, if you're not ready to go there yet, don't go there yet. Let me finish up the Costa. Let me, right. let me let me let me have a nice a nice. Uh, so I, what I like to do water is, water. Uh, you know, guys, I love to end my show. Closure. To closure with the Costa. And I'll. Oh my God. See, I've just still, I've still got like three. Just smell that. In, in accordance with your Costa. That is so Fortaleza. That blanco totally comes through. Like oh yeah, the cheese. That just like that unique Fortaleza character whips through. There's nothing. Like Penetrates me. You know, Penetrates me. The, the problem is, this stuff's going to be sold and gone. If you don't get it now, you're never going to find it. Now, I might not speak to you, but... I can live with that. Shut up, Gabe! I can live with you that. You didn't even taste it yet! I have had lot five. When? I not Nah, you had it with like... You, it was a bad scene. No, it was not a bad. It was a very good scene. There were lots of cool cats there. They were very, very generous. Well, and San Diego's great. Yeah. And then the scene down there is great. But the bad scene you were in is that you did not like that lot five. <laughs> yeah, apparently. I still got some OG there. I'm going to so beat off. What do, you, what do you think this is? Oh, rock! You, you do that you off camera it? on your own. I thought you did Uh, so Kiko says he went out and got two cases because of Lippy. Two cases of what, baby? Uh, I assume, oh, no, I assume he lot needs five. The, the Lot 5 Fortaleza. Which he still needs his Lot 5. There, there's, there's a whole lot. Uh, have you noticed the, the Fortaleza groupie vibe in San Diego? I have definitely noticed this. There's a, there's a very... Don't be a groupie. Don't be a groupie. I want you to taste and feel for yourself. I happen to have... It, it speaks to me. Yeah. What's the, uh, oh, oh, God damn, it's so fucking good. I, I, I think we differ on this point, but I could smell that all night. I mean, that speaks to me as much as Elvis soil. It just does. It got... that's, a, that's a bold claim, folks. That's yes, a bold is. claim. Don't just take that on face value. Well, think about that. I don't say it lightly. Is that a reasonable thing to say? No. Hey, what do you got? What do you got that's better? You little Philly? Don't. You mean besides all these El Sorro bottles? Well... You know, I think that's the... Even though you, even though you fondled that and stroked it as if it were your, your own. Um, yes. I think that's the, that's the loser of the night, that's the El Sorro lineup. Of all the ones we drank, that was maybe the least favorite. The, 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 the party drink tonight? That, that is the loser. Maybe the 10 the 1018, which had kind of a strong alcohol vibe. Yeah, but you know, the 1018, I would rather drink that. I'd rather drink two or three glasses of that than that Paradiso. Really? Yes, because yeah. I think that Paradiso, it's kind of like this this kind of raping thing. It's like raping my tongue. It's, it, it, it's got something. Uh, it's more, it's more, yeah, it's got more of an attack to it. It does, it does. And it floats me. Alright, so I'm moving on to the Fortaleza, um, Lot 5. The Red Bull, right? Uh, which is, uh, now, which is giving you the swing. Do I have to talk about this again? Talk and how GES talked about how the barrels have been re-chipped and they've been re-aged and they've been like you know. Uh, it's got it's got a nice nose, or it's, it's got that cheesy and that Fortaleza nose. Well, what's it got, Gabe? It's got a good nose. So, so my 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 feeling with the with the aged Fortaleza is I, I feel like there's too much loss, too little gain. That's like a blank. The Blanco is so bold and so amazing. Blanco so, is, is it's so crack like. It's, yes. You know, it's, as Witchy says, it's tequila crack. Yes. I like, can't get enough of that shit. Yes! Um, and Lock the Red Bull is just like, they just took everything and like toned it down. Like, except, a, except for this Red Bull. Except it's like, for this what happened? one. Where did, where did all that delicious flavor go? Now it's just like a little bit of wood and, man. And that's, uh -huh. that's my complaint with the, with the H4 glazes. There's this kind of burnt caramel 
liquid butter. Yeah, there's totally a burnt flavor there. Right? No kidding. Right? I don't know if I like that. Fair enough. I don't know if I like that. But you're tasting but it. But I agree. It's there. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Nothing tastes like this. They've taken the Parmesan. It's like bur- It's like sugar-coated Parmesan and burn it, like burn it out of your ass. Like naked chicks. Ru- ru- it's like ru- naked chicks with, with burnt like Parmesan. Parmesan. Yeah. And then being Under like, the hot sun. It, yeah, with like a flamethrower. Like, <laughs> that's so hot. Uh, no uh, pun intended. No pun intended. Uh, Oh, oh, oh man! All right, now so now we get to the point where the people out there say, "Well, Lippy, what would you rather drink all night?" I mean, you've been through El Tesoro, you've been through Ben Waco, you've been through uh, the oh, original Gangster. Here it is! It's the end of the show, baby. The circle is completed. What do you want to drink for the rest of the night? When the camera goes off, what do you want to drink? I'm going to tell you something. But it might take me a minute. I'm anxiously, or eagerly, I should say, eagerly waiting to respond. Alright. Alright, here we go. What's that? OG. OG White Label. Alright, so listen. I know El Tesoro is great. I know it's fantastic. But I have to make a decision. For for its wonderful history and fortitude, El Tesoro gets an incredible A+. Their their whole line of product is A++. It's fantastic. Nothing comes close, right? Now... uh, um, Fuck out for like like ten seconds. So you're telling me as you were. You're telling me Lip, what do you want to drink? What what do I want to drink for the rest of the night? That's not a fair question, and I'll be the first to say. I've been through so much healthy sorrow and how beautiful it is. You know what I want? You know what I want to do? You know what I want to do? What do you want to do? You know what I want to do? What do you want to do? You know what I want to do for the rest of the night? You know what I want to do? This is what I want to do. I want to take a shot of Original Gangster. OG White Label. Then I want to take a shot. Then I want to take a shot of Fortaleza Repo. Then I want to take a shot of... El Tesoro. You're fucking mad there. Crazy. Uh, Yeno. Crazy. White label and Yeno. I want to go just like that. So that by the time I get to that in Yeno, I've already gone someplace very different, but so sublime. I, I, it's fantastic. What can I tell you? I'm going to lay down my opinion on that and say the winner of the tequila fight tonight. This is a fight? Well, if I had a drink for the next week and I only got one drink, I'm going to tell you what it is. El Tesoro and Yale. And Yale. Ooh. Ooh. That's my one. Unexpected outcome. Yeah. Unexpected outcome. Yeah. That's my one. Do you have anything that's, uh, if I forced you to drink one thing? Nothing. Nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. OG White Label. I would never turn. Well, I would, we did talk about that as our desert island trip, yeah, didn't we? Yeah, and I totally stand by that. So yeah, oh, look at me. I'm, I'm giving up. Uh, so the, o, OG White Label, both the Silver. Can you imagine what OG Yeo would taste like? I would love to try it. I would love to try it. Oh fucking my god! Now I know where that exists in, in Sacramento. Should we go do it? But I think we need really? to... Yes, I know where it exists. Like in the bar? No, yes. We can't buy it, we can buy it in the bar. We need to Why drink... haven't we gone there? We need to drink this... Good Lord. Why are we here? Road trip. Road trip! Are you good to drive? Because I'm not good to drive. Should we go right now? Yeah. Well, they'll, be, your close, they'll be close by the time we your daughter arrives. <laughs> Let's do that. Uh, I know someone who can help us. We should totally go there. We're going to go OG... I said this is this is the balls TJ somehow in the right way. Yes. Yes. Mm. So yeah, everything I just said, I take back. <laughs> OG 
OG white label. It's all I want to drink. It's that is the desert island. It's all I want to drink. Okay, so if I may, if I may summarize our our short show. OG you white. Did you miss it? OG. What, what I, I still got some. I'm good. OG white label. Out the sorrow. Hands all I want to drink. Pulls everything away. I think the silver was next for me. Silver was really good. Very forte. It, it was, yeah, it had a lot going on. It was complex. It was rich. It had this richness. Yes, it was. Yes. And it was muy very, macho. I think fuller than anything other than, uh, fuller than the Ripper were in you. Yeah, totally. Yeah, right? Totally. And it had I, the I, flower of love. I think the Añejo came next. The Añejo was rich and buttery. It had a lot going on. It was complex and interesting and bold. It made my nipples hard. Yeah. Right? It made his nipples hard. I, I can't argue with that. Um, the Rapo, the 1015 Rapo was good. Yeah! Tequila burp! The te yeah. If, if it, that's another hallmark. Just the same way that it's sniffing an empty glass. A, a really good tequila, you burp up, and you're like, yeah, that tasted great. That's a great indicator. If you burp it up, great tequila flavor, you're drinking a fucking macho, delicious fucking tequila. Macho. Oh, gee, baby. You're just burping up crap or, or nothing. Nothing. Oh, gee. So, Alpha Soro and Yeho comes next. The 1015 Rapo. The 1018 Rapo. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if it's. You I, put that ahead of the costume. Yeah, so I'm, I'm kind of fact. I'm, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. Um, I don't know. We're starting to get like too yeah. off track. I, I don't know where I would put the Costa relative to the 1018 Rapo. That's Rapo's. a Costa. That's a silly Different, it's, it is. It's different. It's it different. is. It doesn't. Know. It doesn't grab you. This Elthosaur shit. That's why I had Gabe here because I knew he would bring the Elthosaur fuerte. He would bring what it takes to take us to Elthosaur. Listen, 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 listen. I'm gonna say, yes, I love Fortaleza. Yes, I love Costa. It's good stuff. And it's worth it. But Elthosaur, when it's on its game, when it's ready, when it's OG. That is it! It wipes the fucking slate clean! Yeah. It does. Totally. It does. Totally. It's Don't what, you forget it! It's what we want. It's what we want all day, all night. No, ah. I have to say, this working laser rock lot five. But what do you think? Wait, wait, wait! Okay, ah. hold on. Don't say it. You haven't said a word about this yet. And you know how much... Sort of sort of it's not a word. It's not a word. Yeah. So it, it smells great. It's got that Fortaleza Blanca. It comes through. I, I like that the Blanco comes through in the, in the, in the nose. That rich, smooth, cracky, cracky, in, in the terms of like crack life. It's like it's like the same. You want it. You want it every day. Yeah. Like all day. Like like, like not just, just like caramel. ejecting the arm. I mean like behind the eyes. Yeah. It's I want the I want caramel. main line it. Main line, baby. Um, but the taste. I mean, as soon as the taste hits, it's, it's too burnt. It's too burnt. It's too woody. What happened to all that delicious smell? Really? It's just like it's like somebody slapping me in the face and like now you're woody. Now you're burnt. So you think the nose is better than the taste. Absolutely. Absolutely. The, the, the taste and the aftertaste are just too much of that burnt wood. It's like, where did the tequila go? Where did that delicious Blanco goodness go? That's what I want to know. Tell me! Gabe, Gabe, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to respectfully uh, step back a few steps. If anything, I would fault the Fortaleza for being way too close to the nose in its taste. I'm getting all of that wood and all of that sugar. A bold statement. And all of the burn in the taste. And uh, I feel all of it. The nose is only preparing me for what I'm about to taste. And there's so many tequilas where the nose uh, gives you a false promise. And um, this fucking Fortaleza is killing me. I think. I think we gotta get Guillermo up here. It's th you're right. It's still there. The, the the blanco deliciousness in the nose is still there, but it's I feel like it's being overshadowed by that that burnt wood. Uh, I don't I like love the burnt wood. Burnt. I don't like the burnt wood. I love it. I mean, I don't hate it, but it's not. It's it's like a vanilla caramel. Oh, Somebody no, mentioned it's cre just, it's creme brulee. Charcoal. It's charcoal. Really? No, you, you're feeling charcoal? Yeah. Right? It's just it's too much. No, 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 no. It's not, it's not I, subtle I disagree. enough. It's so well subtle, different. It's not subtle. It's not subtle. It's very vanilla, but natural wood vanilla. It's very, very in your face. Um, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you, but I don't, no? I don't dig it. I don't dig it. See? It's just, uh, 
What a show we've had. Now let, let, let me. 1942, but natural. <laughs> let me um, let me try to try to try to get it together here and kind of get some closure. Some closure. Yes. All right. So um, I, I thank you guys for being with us to the end, and especially you lurkers who have been here the whole time. That's true. Yeah. Prop, props, props, uh, lurkers. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much for coming and enjoying don't, the don't show. Don't kill me if we meet in person. Or there has been there have been a 15, 20, there have been like 30 lurkers tonight. That's okay. Next time, maybe you'll come in and uh, uh, key up. Gabe, Gabe, uh, Witchy misses you. Word up, word up, so Witchy. listen, word up. Um, Kinto, how are we ending up? Just help me out here. Tell me what, uh, Witchy, what are you drinking? Kinto. Yeah, yeah. What are you drinking? Back. Just talk to us, baby. Yeah. Talk to us. Just tell me what you're drinking here, because this is, this is the beauty of the live things. A perfect imperfection. Right, who, who, who's this? Little Feet. This is never heard of Little Feet. Ah, F-E-A-T. Oh, oh you got it. Feet. Little ah, Feet. very clever. All right, so uh, <clears throat> Witchy says he's drinking uh, uh, White Label in Yale. I Fantastic. totally respect that. And um, Kito is uh, in the bathroom. Kito has passed out. So, ah. so Gabe, your final breakdown was. Um, if you had to, you'd be drinking original gangster white label. No contest. No contest. I gotta say. Like if I met a woman that a woman that smelled like that, I'd be all over her. Now here's the thing. I'm like actually, hey baby, women doing? women dig the uh, lot five. Now this is gonna go away. Now let me ask you something, Gabe. This bottle is approximately sixty bucks, give or take, in America. Do you own a bottle? Of this? I do not. Would you buy a bottle? Iffy, iffy. I, 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 it, it does have. I feel like it does have kind of a, a little bit of a burnt, burnt wood taste. I love Fortaleza Blanco, um, the Repo Añejo. I, I do feel like, and the same thing with Partida Añejo. I feel like too much loss, too little gain. Um, uh, so I usually keep a bottle of, of Fortaleza Blanco on hand, but the the, the aged versions just not quite compelling enough, especially at that price point. Once they're about fifty bucks. You gotta be good. I mean, you gotta be like, you know. All right. Fair so enough. It's, it's, it's a hard sell for me. I gotta say, the um, that that uh, Fortaleza Lot Five is speaking very, very, very much to the center of my tasting core. It really speaks to me. Um, you know, would I put it up against uh, White Label and Yeho? They're so different. Yeah. I, 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 I'm, I'm not ready to make that choice right now. Well, what do I have to? I have to. If I have to choose, I'm on a desert island. What am I going to choose? I'm going to choose the Fortaleza. Ooh. Guillermo. Ooh. I'm gonna Bold do move. I'm gonna do Bold move. I'm gonna do That's the one that will take me all night long. That El Tesoro is um, it's like someone who's so fucking smart. They're going to constantly challenge you. I find that El Tesoro is a challenge. And I love it, and I think it's one of the best ages of all the other sort we've tasted. I just don't know if I'm ready to be challenged every time I take a sip. Wow. Sometimes I just want to enjoy. And uh, that Fortaleza, it's killing me, man. Um, it is its own thing. Nothing tastes like it, and it doesn't taste like anything else. So that's my my uh, you know so so if I if I if I hold up the flag and say tonight what's the winner is it Elta so, uh, is, is it Fortaleza Lot Five Repo no the winner for me tonight what am I gonna drink on a desert island all for the rest of my life unlimited supply original gangster so now. Having said that, my goal and my challenge and my promise to you is that Gabe and I will get together again and we will taste Original Gangster Repo and we will taste Original Gangster Anego together. And we'll talk about it online. It may be the greatest tequila ever made.
It may be. It may be. I second that. I wholeheartedly second that. Everything seems to be... How does it compare to original games? It's outrageous. Alright. You guys, I don't want to end it any more than you do, but it's time. Look, uh, Gabe, which he says he misses you. We're not Richie. Miss we you, miss, miss you, baby. Too, I, I would... wish you were out here. Yeah. Come out to Cali. It's, that's where all the cool kids yeah, are coming out. Yeah, Quinto and Pedro and Maria yeah. Jose and come out, to North, and come out to South Bay or North and Bay. And Ballard and Rachel and all the people and Bobby and Jackie and Sammy. Should we sing a little like goodbye? Do you know this song? No. <laughs> this is me and Mrs. Jones. We got a thing going on. I can just like hum random, random notes. But it's sort of much it. too strong. Much too strong. To let it go. Let it go. We meet every day. Every day. In the same cafe. Same I know, I know she'll be there. She'll be there. Oh, holding hands, hands, making all kinds of plans. Yeah. While the jukebox plays our favorite song. Same. This is Mrs. Mrs. Jones. Mrs. Jones. Mrs. Jones. We love you people. You're our people. You're our neighbors. Cheers, folks. Thanks You're for the in. people we 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 got a wee wee. Oh, so that <laughs> All right, people. All right. Thank you for coming. Okay, yeah, give me a kiss. No, I'm not that kind of guy. I'm a South Bay guy. I shouldn't have asked. I'll give you a hug.